Home Improvement, weeknights at 7.30 on Fox 5. This is a Fox Sports presentation. The time has come to explore baseball's past. But understand, it is a journey not for the weak of heart. An adventure not soon to be forgotten. The camera highlights in the world of sports. Baseball has created a world of dreams, but it's time to wake from those dreams and blast into the future of a whole new ball game. Ooh, baby, it's the one and only Fox Saturday Baseball. It's the first of June and the baseball season is well underway, but it's time for the real action to begin right here on Fox Saturday Baseball. Hello and welcome from Hollywood, California and studio number seven where you might be used to seeing the hockey and football guys running around, but not today. We have baseball inside and out. We even have a added surprise to our studio show, a little thing we call Fox Park, and we'll take you there just a little later on. Hello, everybody. I'm Chip Carey. Happy that you're tuned in to Fox Sports for our debut of televising Major League Baseball every Saturday for the rest of the year. Joining me, as they will every week, is a future Hall of Famer and a nine-year Major League veteran, Dave Winfield and Steve Lyons. Guys, welcome two months into the season. Any surprises so far? For me, for my money, what makes this season so exciting is that we have league leaders and contenders in new and unexpected places. San Diego, Montreal, down there in Texas. They're keeping hope alive. They refuse to lose. I love it. Hey, surprise, surprise, 1996 is going to go down in history as the year of offense. There's so many runs being scored, tons of hits, and home runs galore. It's unbelievable. You know, I almost feel sorry for some of the pitchers out there, but there's only three American League starters right now with an ERA below three, and one of those guys, Juan Guzman, is out of action right now. And those hurlers are only sorry because there's one less easy out in the major leagues <laughs> when you're sitting right. right here. All right, guys, time now for our Fox Watch, and you'll see one of two games, either the Red Sox and the defending most valuable player in the American League, Mo Vaughn, facing Ken Griffey Jr. and the Seattle Mariners. Or you'll see the Dodgers and Mets from Shea Stadium, where the big story is Mike Piazza. Calling that game is Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. Good afternoon, guys. Okay, Chip, thank you very much. It is a gorgeous day here at Shea Stadium getting ready for the Dodgers and the Mets. And, Tim, I would imagine all eyes right now are on Dodger catcher Mike Piazza after he suffered that knee injury midweek in Philadelphia. And a knee injury is much more serious for a catcher than it is for any other position player. Will he be affected defensively? I don't think so. There's an old axiom in baseball that if you can catch to squat and give the signs, then you can go down and block the ball in the dirt. The big thing, however, about Piazza, can he swing the bat? Can he push off the back foot without losing power? I think he proved that last night with that monster home run. And there is no doubt the Dodgers need his bat in the lineup. He is in the lineup today. They're five and a half out, but it's early. And you can't afford to lose the type of power and average that Mike Piazza gives you. We are getting ready to roll on opening day of Major League Baseball on Fox here at Shea. Now we send you across the country to the great Northwest to Seattle, Josh Lewin and Ken Singleton. 
All right, thanks, guys. Here at the Kingdom last night, there were a couple of scary moments, and they involved two of the bigger names in baseball. Let's start with Mo Vaughn, last year's MVP. Mo was hit by a pitch last night in the ball game. Just happened to follow an at bat in which he hit a home run. Kind of a coincidence, huh? Well, Mo hangs over to play. He understands this can happen. He's okay. He's in there today. Ken Griffey Jr. in center field into the wall, chasing down a shot last night just about a year ago into the very same wall here at the Kingdom. But he broke his wrist, 73 games out for the season. Thankfully, Griffey and Vaughn good to go today. The stars are out indoors for the Mariners and the Red Sox. Let's go back to Chip Carey now in Hollywood. Okay, Josh, thank you very much. Let's get you caught up on what's happened already in the major leagues. One final in. It comes from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati where the Braves have beaten the Reds 12 times in a row, but a tough start for Greg Maddox. First of all, an error by Chipper Jones scores the first Cincinnati run. It's 1-0 in the first. Then runners first and second. Thomas Howard doubles down the left field line. Barry Larkin comes in to score. The Reds lead 2-0. They add another run and take a 3-0 lead later into the ball game. All the offense Greg, Mus Greg Maddox saw today was mustered by two solo home runs, one by Javier Lopez, the other by the crime dog Fred McGriff, and the Reds have now won the game 3-2, first win of the year by Mark Portugal, Jeff Brantley the save. At County Stadium in Milwaukee, tempers flare for the second game in a row. Fernando Vina had his nose broken by Albert Bell last night. Today, Kenny Lofton goes nose to nose with him. Daryl Cousins breaks up that little tete-a-tete. -tete. No punches thrown, and calm was restored. But Phil Garner saw Angel Miranda pitch a great game, but he walks Kenny Lofton with the bases loaded in the sixth inning. That made it one nothing Cleveland in that ball game. Then, late in the ball game, in the bottom of the seventh inning, a two-strike triple off the bat of Jose Valentin scores Greg Vaughn. That makes it 1-1. The Brewers have now added a run in the bottom of the seventh inning. David Hulse with an RBI single as the rain drops falling at County Stadium in Milwaukee. There it is, 2-1 your score. The Brewers lead the try. Dave, what about that Cleveland ball club? All kinds of offensive chances today. Now they're trailing by a run. Well, although expected, there's not a lot of offense being generated from the Tribe or the Brewers, and these are two of the most prolific uh, offensive scoring ball clubs in the American League. Pitching has been dominant. It's taking a center stage today. Jack McDowell has done extremely well, and also Angel Miranda, but it's the bottom of the seventh, and the Brewers have taken the lead. How about this Atlanta ball club? Could it be that Greg Maddox is actually human? His ERA right now ballooning to 2.87. Here's a guy for the last four years has had an ERA under two. Most pitchers would take that ERA. Just bad luck for him. Indeed it is, and Atlanta loses 3-2 today. All right, it's time for our first break, and when we come back, Steve and I chat with the Dodgers' Brett Butler. But first, here's a look at what's on deck for today's show. Coming up on Fox is Saturday Baseball. And hey, this junior is hotter than a pistol. Some have even suggested political greatness. Armed and loaded with immense talent, Ken Griffey Jr. is content as one of the most complete ball players in the game today. Dave Winfield catches up with the high-flying Seattle superstar. Then, the old ballpark just ain't keeping the ball in play this season. It's no secret, we've got a power surge on our hands. And at the current rate, some mighty big records are ready to Ball. Coming up, coming at you, the one and only Fox Saturday Baseball. I loved him with all my heart. Where the hell's the ambulance? L.A. Firefighters, premiering Monday. Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. By Canon, so advanced it's simple. By 7-Eleven, oh thank heaven for 7-Eleven. And by Pizza Hut, home of the all new triple decaroni pizza. Have one delivered today. And welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball. It's been a very emotional week for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Their former teammate, Mike Sharperson, who represented the Dodgers in the 1992 All-Star Game, was killed in a car crash Sunday morning. But then some positive news, and this involves Brett Butler, who, as you probably know, had surgery to remove cancerous lymph nodes. Doctors believe the cancer has not spread, and if all goes well, there's an outside chance he could come back to play this season. Earlier, Steve and I had a chance to talk with Brett, and I asked him, how's he doing? Well, I guess on a scale from 1 to 10, feeling-wise, I'm probably about a 5 or 6. Uh, I had the sutures, or I should say the staples, removed from the side of my neck right here, 34 of them. Goes from here all the way down, and then from my Adam's apple 
around to the side here. They were removed, so that's real, real tight, but there's not a lot of pain. I've got sutures in the inside of my mouth that are pretty sore. Still having trouble uh, swallowing a little bit, and it seems to, uh, because of the soft palate, makes it a little tougher to drink water because it has a tendency to come out your nose, and just little nitpicking things. But other than that, I'm doing all right, trying to get my strength back and trying to gain about 10 or 11 pounds that I've lost. Despite the, the toll that this has taken on you, it has to be a tremendous bit of pressure for your family as well. How have you as a family dealt with this tragedy? Well, my, my, my wife has been a rock through this whole thing. You know, uh, there's scripture that talks about peace beyond understanding, and Evelyn seems to have had that. God has revealed that to her. I don't know why. There are people that have come to console her and help her to relax, and she's more or less done that to them. The kids have been very good at handling this. They asked all the, the questions to the doctors. Can my father die? Will he die? Is he going to change? Is he going to be in a lot of pain? Those questions were all answered. They feel pretty comfortable with it. So we're kind of uh, to a point of normalcy around here, and uh, the family's done very well. You know, you have been such an inspiration to your team and your teammates through all of this, and yet they have been almost equally as inspirational towards you, taking your uniform on the road, setting up your locker. How has that made you feel? Um, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, there's really not words to describe it. Not, not only in Atlanta and the way the guys have handled it and, and acted and treated me, but to former teammates and teams like the, like the Mets and, you know, getting called from, uh, from Dusty Baker and Robbie Thompson and from the guys. And then the outpouring of love throughout the nation. It's just overwhelming for me. And uh, well, if I really sit down and think about it, it chokes me up. Well, Brett, as always, uh, thank you for the visit. We're sorry it's under these kind of circumstances, but our thoughts and prayers are with you, and uh, best wishes to you and your family. Well, we appreciate it. Again, we feel the thoughts and the prayers, and uh, that's the only way we can get through it is through uh, the guidance of Christ. And, and for us, uh, we feel your prayers, and we thank you. So, Dave, Hetty, stuff for this young man to deal with now. Wow. There's absolutely no good time to face illness or injury on a baseball team or in life in general. What happened to one of baseball's good guys like Brett Butler really puts life into perspective. And, you know, the great thing about this is that Brett really wants this illness to be an inspiration to the Dodgers, not drag them down. And he'd be the first guy right there telling them, you guys got to go out and play and play hard. And, again, our best wishes for a speedy recovery for Brett Butler. All right, when we come back, we'll discuss why the phrase home run derby is being tossed around this season. And we'll take a closer look at one of the men responsible for the increasing number of homers. That's all-star Ken Griffey Jr. Get a little older, get a little wiser. Uh, that's why, I mean, I still wear my hat backwards. Last night in Seattle, Ken Griffey Jr. helped spark a comeback from a 5-1 deficit with his two-out three-run home run in the fifth. The Mariners went on to beat the Red Sox 9-6. And welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball. Today, the Red Sox and Mariners get together for the third game of their four-game set. As you saw, the Mariners are relying on Griffey's bat, not to mention his defense, to stay competitive in the American League West. Now, Dave, you had a chance to chat with Kenny and his parents earlier this week. Is it possible to see he's raised his level of play? Well, based on the numbers he's put up over the last few seasons, it'd be nearly impossible for even Griffey to improve upon him. But what Ken Griffey Jr. has done is matured, and a grown-up junior is definitely a better player because of that. Some feel his dash from first to home in last year's playoffs may have rescued baseball from the abyss. Here is Jr. to the third base. The throw to the plate will be late. Fittingly, the man once known as Kid was the foundation for his teammates' youthful explosion. But even after all that, baseball's potential savior just may savor another school. This is the, the original slide that I had now up until I was 20. He always had a lot of fun. He enjoyed what he was doing, especially when it was baseball. He blossomed in the game under the wing of, not dad, mom, until he became a teenager. He threw a baseball so hard that it pulled the glove completely off my hand. She'd be yelling at us and we'd start laughing. And that was the last time I played catch with him. <laughs> Call. Hat on backwards, maybe the shoes untied, maybe a slow trot to the field, but always a good big smile on the face. Uh, your demeanor has changed a little bit. Get a little older, get a little wiser. And I've seen the change since he's been married. Then I've seen another level when he had his first child. Hi. The one thing he did as soon as Trey was born, get rid of all his fast cars. Uh, gotcha. 
and now that he has a little girl, forget it, he's lost. I mean, he is hooked. His maturation as a ball player and a person have gone hand in hand. He's assumed more leadership and responsibilities for his baseball family, as well as the family he cherishes. Let's see all these books. 90% of them are baseball related. <laughs> and then you got the book that says, <laughs> you've been doing some reading, huh? Well, the early stages in life, um, the importance of reading to your kid, spending time with them, taking them places, those are things that I have to do, and that's what the book tells you. Ken Griffey Jr. The latest chapter in Junior's life is a political ad campaign. Presidential candidate. We're not a nation of individuals. We're one big American league. What would he be like as president? <laughs> Everybody be playing Nintendo. <laughs> what do you have in store for education? You just get uh, Monday off and, and uh, you get to leave early Friday. How about it, Mom? What would he be? How would he be? I wouldn't want him to be president, not at this age. He has matured a lot, but please. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're not serious about this, are we? No. <laughs> no. I just want oh, you all no. to know that. Oh, no. No, we're not. It was obvious from our little talk that Junior may no longer want to be referred to as the kid, but what he'll be known for for many years to come, that's the franchise. You can't call him the man either. That's Stan Musial's nickname, although Junior shares the same birthday, November 21st, and birthplace, Denora, Pennsylvania, as Stan Musial. But, uh, Steve, bigger problems for the Mariners. Last year, they were able to overcome Griffey's absence for half the season. This year, they're missing the big unit, Randy Johnson. Yeah, Randy Johnson has this back problem, and that's going to keep him out of the lineup maybe indefinitely. We don't know when he's coming back. But I'll tell you what, I think it's more important that you keep your everyday players healthy because they can beat you so many ways. We noticed the big surge that the Mariners had last year when Griffey came back to the lineup. And if you can keep them healthy, they can beat you with a glove, they can beat you with a bat, they can beat you with speed. For as great as Randy Johnson is, he only has an impact on the game one out of every five days. Well, Steve, you talked about the Mariners' everyday players having to pick up the slack, and they are leading the majors in home runs with 92. But as you know, they're not the only ones going deep. One example of that is the Expos' Henry Rodriguez. Last night in Montreal, Rodriguez hit his 20th home run of the season. That shot broke the National League record for most homers by the end of May, which had been held by two players, Eric Davis with the Reds in 87 and Matt Williams with the Giants in 94. Also that year, over 4,400 home runs were hit, a major league record. Well, this year, at that current pace, that number would be reached by the middle of September. So why all the home runs? Well, many have claimed that the ball is juiced or made of... Home runs? Well, many have claimed that the ball is juiced or made in such a way that it will travel farther. Well, we decided to find out whether that's true. What we did was take two balls, one from the 1993 World Series and another used this season. We went to the physics laboratories at USC. Now, what we did was put the ball into a wind tunnel. What this does is show how the air affects the two balls. After our tests, here's what was found out. In this test, the 1996 ball was shown to have 10% less drag than the 1993 ball. Therefore, the 1996 ball would travel further when struck by a bat and may not break as much when pitched. Now, one thing to keep in mind, while the test was done under scientific controls, this result is not conclusive evidence that the ball's juiced. Our friends at USC say to get conclusive results, they would need more than two dozen balls to test. Nevertheless, Steve, do you agree with what the physicists say? Oh, I absolutely agree. Hey, this is science we're talking about here right now. The ball is juiced, and I'll tell you what, you have these teeny weeny little middle infielders going deep. The ball's flying out of the park at record paces. If I was playing, I'd have like two or three home runs right now. Yeah, right. Listen, I played over 20 years, and I felt no noticeable difference. I could see no noticeable difference. And this year, guys like Bichette, Bayerga, Tim Salmon, these guys aren't going deep, so you can't prove it by them. What it comes down to, these guys are bigger and stronger than they have ever been. And if you want to go deep, you got to have the juice. This is where the juice is. Ooh, that's, that's, some juice. that's some juice. Well, let's go from the big guns to the small strike zone. Is that a big cause as well? I had a chance to sit down with an American League umpire and crew with Joe Brinkman and Daryl Cousins and Ken Geyser. These guys have 60 years of experience under their belt. They told me that they're calling the same strikes that they always have. The problem is the pitchers aren't throwing inside anymore. They're not getting ahead. And that's the biggest problem. Same strike zone. Do you guys think someone will hit 61 or more this year? If anybody can do it, I'd say Albert Bell. He has the best chance. Albert Bell's your man. We'll see if you guys are right. And coming up next, we head on out to the Fox Park and put some of Dave and Steve's theories to test. 
And we'll look at the really dangerous hitters in the game, those who are taking it deep but are also posting some incredibly high batting averages as well. Game 22-10 about to start, and everyone's still wondering, where is Cal Ripken Jr.? Could this be the end of the streak? What could possibly keep him from taking the field? Introducing the Major League Baseball Collector Series phone card from 7-Eleven and Classic. Okay, kids. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a beast. A collection of 15-minute prepaid 7-Eleven phone cards that can save you up to 50% on long-distance calls. So you can really talk up a streak. How long will they hold this game? Tonight, see what happens when the world's biggest party goes totally out of control. Cops at Mardi Gras, part of a full hour. Then, police say he gunned down innocent people in cold blood. Now it's up to you to bring him to justice. Watch America's Most Wanted tonight after Cops. There's still a little life in that Dave Winfield bat as we welcome you back to Fox Saturday Baseball and our first look at beautiful Fox Park, a place where we can see what's really going on with hitting, pitching, and defense in the major leagues. Our topic today, as you know, is the incredible number of home run hitters who are having superb offensive seasons with the batting average as well. In fact, you look at all the top major league home run hitters, all of them are hitting well over 300 this year, including the Boston Red Sox, Mo Vaughn, who came into the Seattle series approaching a 350 batting average and hitting 19 home runs. And Steve, how has Mo Vaughn been able to do this? Well, let's not forget we're talking about last year's American League MVP, but what has been the big change for him is a change in his swing. When he first came to the major leagues, he was a dead Paul hitter. He actually got sent back to the minor leagues, and when he came back, he came back with a new swing, an inside-out swing. Now, what do I mean by that? Look at the way he leads through the hitting zone with his hands. The bat head actually trails the swing. That gives him a chance to see the ball a little bit longer and use the entire field. Now, because of that, he's become a great average hitter, but because of his strength, he's able to jump the yard anytime he takes a hack up there. And for you pitchers that think you might be able to bury him inside because he's looking for the ball away, don't try it. As you can see right here, he can go way out of the park in right field, too. Well, Steve, let's change our socks, as it were. Mo Vaughn of the Red Sox. How about Frank Thomas of the White Sox? You may not know this, but Frank Thomas has been on base in every game Chicago has played this year. That is incredible. So an incredible physical accomplishment for Frank Thomas so far, but Dave Winfield, an even more impressive mental accomplishment. Oh, gentlemen, certainly is. The first thing that people note when they see Frank Thomas is that massive physical size, strength, Ooh, they just know that he's going to be a special kind of ball player. But there's certain things that lie below the surface that I'll touch on that help elevate him to this level of greatness. The first thing is when Frank steps into the batter's box, he is loose, free, easy, well-balanced, and ready to pounce on the pitcher. That's very important. The second element of it, Frank has a real understanding, not only just an understanding of the strike zone, but a command of the strike zone. Normally, players are out there diving and darting off balance, going fishing. Now, Frank Thomas, he rarely goes fishing. If he does, he's going to reel in a big one. And the only time pitchers get him out, basically, is the law of averages. Now, the next element of it is Frank uses the entire field. If you look at his chart throughout an entire year, his hitting chart, he, uses, he goes from line to line, right to left, base hits, extra base hits, whatever the case may be. When you uh, thin out the defense, this enables more balls to drop in, hence a higher average. And finally, you come down to the tough mental approach. And uh, that ties everything together, day after day, week after week, and for an entire season. For mere mortals, basically, it, all it is hitting is see the ball, hit the ball. Yeah, and Frank Thomas having a great, great year for the Chicago White Sox. And kids, we hope you enjoyed our little seminar here at Fox Park. And when we come back to Fox Saturday Baseball, we're going to take you out to the ball game. We'll send you to the game in your area when we come back right after this. You're watching Fox Saturday Baseball. The 1996 Los Angeles offense relies on Mike Piazza's league-leading hitting and power. Last night, Piazza returned from a midweek knee injury to put a smile on his manager's face. Eric Karros muscled up as well as the Dodgers banged out a season-high 16 hits at Chase Stadium. 
Tommy knows the Dodgers' success rests on the broad shoulders of his all-star catcher. Sore knee and all, the Dodgers need him now and for the stretch. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Major League Baseball on Fox. Same game, but a new attitude. From the sparkling skyline of New York City out to Shea Stadium on a gorgeous day for baseball 82 degrees and sunny we get ready to bring you Major League Baseball on Fox and the Dodgers and the Mets and hello everybody my name is Joe Buck along with my partner Tim McCarver happy to be working with Tim and happy to be bringing you Major League Baseball here on Fox you'll find us here every weekend every Saturday through the regular season through the playoffs and then we'll crown our first season with the World Series here in 1996 and Tim McCarver talking about this game specifically and the Los Angeles Dodgers they have not been what people thought they would coming into the season a little disappointing but they busted out last night for a season high 16 hits well Joe if uh, hitting is contagious and it certainly is well the Dodgers had an epidemic last night and the right guys were affected too. Roger Cedeno, the leadoff hitter and center fielder, filling in for Brett Butler, five for five. Eric Karros with a big three-run home run. Mike Blowers with a two-run home run. But the very fact that Mike Piazza played and homered, a big plus for the Dodgers. Meanwhile, for the Mets coming in, baseball people said, and I still don't know who baseball people are, <laughs> but they said this New York Mets team would be a serious contender for postseason play. So far, it hasn't worked out that way. Maybe it was a little unfair coming in with this young of a team. I think think unrealistic because of the youth not because of the talent I think the Mets have the nucleus of a good ball club in the future with Jason Isringhausen Paul Wilson and Bill Pulsifer when the left hander went down earlier in the year that really affected their chances but the additions of Lance Johnson and Bernard Gilkey have helped the Mets cause mightily this year these Mets will take on those Dodgers it's a beautiful day for a ball game here at Shea Stadium sunny 82 degrees we're glad you're with us first pitch lineups everything coming up when we come back we'll come back to Shea Stadium after these messages from your local station You're watching Fox Saturday Baseball. The 10 o'clock news tonight on Fox 5. Did I lie? Did I lie? It's a beautiful day for baseball here at Shea Stadium. It is, and you didn't. I did not, and it's some of the best weather the Mets have played in here at Shea Stadium. And, well, it's just like being in Los Angeles. Give you a look at Tommy Lasorda's lineup brought to you by Miller. Leading it off will be Roger Cedeno. He had five hits here last night. Todd Hollinsworth batting second and left. Mike Piazza, he homered in his first game back here last night at Shea Stadium. And Eric Karros is batting in the cleanup spot. Raul Mondesi in right. Delano DeShields, the second baseman. Mike Blowers, Juan Castro, the shortstop. And the pitcher batting ninth is Tom Candiotti. Mets take the field right on cue. Things are working well. It's Gilkey, Johnson, and Jones in the outfield left to right. With Kent Ordonez, Vizcaino, and Pettigini on the infield, third to first. Brent Main doing the catching today. Todd Hundley has the day off. And on the mound is the right hander, Pete Harnish, who sports a record of three and three. And a lot has been made about the Dodgers having Mike Piazza back. And they're certainly happy about that. Well, the Mets are happy to have Pete Harnish back, undergoing a, an eight game suspension for a fight that occurred against the Chicago Cubs on May the 11th of this year, about three and a half weeks ago. And here it is, Pete Harnish getting a ball thrown behind him by Terry Adams and then popping Scott Service, the catcher for the Chicago Cubs. Harnish had hit Kevin Foster, the starter, in that game. And that's why Adams threw behind Pete. Pete also missed the last two months of last season, shoulder surgery in late August and then he had Lyme's disease in December and that uh, did not bode well for his rehabilitation. He was set back in spring training his first start on April the 14th. It's a pretty good shot he got in there on Scott. Service. Yes it was. I mean normally in a baseball brawl a lot of push and shoving 
And, and the thing is, Scott Service and Pete Harnish are good friends. I asked Scott the next day about the fight. He said, Pete Harnish is the best friend I have in baseball. No, he didn't. He said the best friend I had in baseball. <laughs> or he should have. Here we go. Roger Cedeno will lead it off for the Dodgers to be followed by Hollinsworth and Piazza. Cedeno last night, a five-hit night. Only 21 years old. Doesn't turn 22 until the middle of August. And in there primarily because Brett Butler, and it's a well chronicled story, Brett Butley, Butler with cancer detected about three weeks ago, and Sedano doing an admirable job filling in. Took a ball. And for the year hitting 271, no home runs, eight RBIs. Now takes a strike, and it's even at one. Still questions as to whether Roger Sedano has enough speed to lead off for this Dodger lineup. He does have four stolen bases. Was caught here last night by Todd Hundley. Two balls and a strike. If you can get a table setter in front of the kind of hitters the Dodgers have backing up this leadoff spot, well, then you have an offense that uh, they can crank out some runs. You have Piazza, Caros, and Mondesi in the 3 4 5 slots. Very formidable. Sedano pops it into center, glasses down. Lance Johnson, one away. Umpires here this afternoon. It's Bruce Fremming behind home plate. Betting second, number With Charlie Williams at first Rebuter, base, Steve Ripley at second Hollins base, and Mark Hirschbeck, who worked the plate here last night at third. I know you're a big fan of Bruce Fremming. I am. If there's one guy that I would have to umpire a ball game, a big ball game, say seventh game of the World Series, Bruce Fremming would be the guy behind the plate. There's Bruce. Mask and all. Todd Hollinsworth digs in. Takes a ball. Hollinsworth hitting in the two spot, a 284 hitter, three homers, 15 RBIs, and seven stolen bases to his credit in 1996. Strike one. Hollinsworth right now filling the void in left field. They have been searching for an everyday left fielder for a while now. As he takes ball two, we saw Ashley a lot last year. They're starting to mix him back into the lineup. For for a left handed bat, this is the guy, Todd Hollinsworth. Not doing much against the Mets this season. And Harnish falls behind him, three and one. And again, we talked about uh, the age of Roger Sedano. He's only 21. Hollinsworth only 22. It just takes time. People lose sight of that. I think sometimes broadcasters lose sight of that, too. That's out of play in a full count on Hollinsworth. Nice size crowd here on a Saturday afternoon at Chase Stadium but the attendance so far this season Tim has not been what the Mets had hoped for. Mets are down about 20 percent in attendance this year. One of the big reasons they did not get off to the start a lot of people thought they would. Ball four skips into Hollinsworth in a one out walk and that spells danger with a guy like Piazza coming up next. Dallas Green taking over the New York Mets in 1993. Tommy Lasorda, on the other hand, took over the Dodgers September 29th, 1976. Dodgers with only two managers over the last 43 years. Piazza digs in, one on, one out. Tommy Lasorda has been with the Dodger organization for 47 years now. And he has a personal attachment to the man at the plate. Piazza takes ball one. It's well documented. Piazza's father and Tommy Lasorda, very good friends growing up just outside of Philadelphia. And not bad for a guy, Piazza, who was drafted in the 705th round of the draft. When he was. 1,612 players drafted before oh. Mike Piazza. Tommy Lasorda had to beg and plead with Dodger management to sign him. Ball and a strike. There are few guys, Tim, who have the capability to make the contact like Mike Piazza makes, and he's leading the league hitting 372, but also have the raw power of Piazza. There might not be a stronger hitter in baseball. Everybody talks about Albert Bell. Certainly he's strong with the Indians. Bo Vaughn with the Red Sox. Frank Thomas with the White Sox. 
several guys in the National League Fred McGriff of the Atlanta Braves in my judgment nobody's stronger pound for pound than this guy opposite field home runs he hits them like left handed hitters do. Piazza gets back in with a one ball one strike count one on one out first inning no score. Just missed try to make that perfect pitch to a guy like Piazza. You fall behind then you're in even more trouble with Keros waiting on deck. Now Pete Harnish came inside to Piazza in Los Angeles and Mike hit a two run homer against him. I was talking to Pete before the game. Pete said I still can't believe he hit that ball out of the ballpark. Inside fastball. Runner not going on a 2 1 count. Now it's 2 and 2. With Piazza at the plate, a runner at first, and down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, that red dot in this case is representative of Todd Hollinsworth. Now, had Sedano been on base too, there'd be dots over first base and second base. Dot, dot. Dot com. One on one out in a two ball two strike count on Piazza. Hollinsworth has seven stolen bases. Harnish has fallen behind the last two hitters now has a 2 2 count on Piazza. Hollinsworth is running the pitch a ball and Hollinsworth steals his eighth bag of the year. Brent Main does not have the arm of Todd Hundley and now Main is 0 for 10 in throwing out base stealers. Looks like Brent leads with his elbow. It's a lot tougher for a catcher to throw a runner out with two strikes because if the ball's close to the strike zone they want to stay back and get the pitch. That's why they don't come out normally like they would if there weren't two strikes on the batter. And now a count of three balls two strikes on Piazza and a runner in scoring position for Mike here in the first. It's ball four and two on with one out Harnish barely missed and now in a first inning jam with Keros coming up. It Batting fourth, number Talked about that inside fastball that Pete Kevin gave Carroll. Piazza in Los Angeles. Well, he stayed away with all six pitches, and this pitch very close, but it was low. Interesting to note that Pete Harnish had gone 59 batters in a row without walking anybody, and he walks Hollinsworth and Piazza in a row here. And now two on, one out for Eric Keros. <laughs> In at the knees for strike one. Karos has not kicked it into gear, hitting only 219, but nine home runs and 29 RBIs. The Dodgers, when they have been winning lately, have been winning with the home run ball, not with prolonged rallies and a lot of hits. Ball and a strike. The Dodgers come into today's action 29 and 26. Five and a half games behind San Diego in the NL West. And there is no doubt the San Diego Padres are for real. A very, very good San Diego team. And once they get Ken Caminetti back there on a regular basis, they'll be better. Out in front just a bit and a one two count. In the National League West, you'll find the San Diego Padres on top with the Dodgers five and a half games out in second place, Colorado and San Francisco. Both playing 500 baseball, but seven out. The Padres seem to have a nice mix of veteran leadership, some good young ball players, and a great bullpen. Absolutely. Two on, one out. That was the 20th pitch of the inning, and it's a 2 2 count on Karos. Now Pete Harnish has had a tough time in the first inning. Five of his last seven starts, he's given up runs in the first. In danger of doing it here today. Got Karras up now, Mondesi on deck. Eric doesn't like hitting with a plane going by overhead, so he'll step out. You see a lot of hitters and pitchers doing that here at Shea Stadium. An ex Met that loved to, to hit with planes coming over was Rusty Staub and hit very effectively in this ballpark, thinking the pitcher was bothered more than he was. 2 2 to Karras. Now a full count. So a long first inning for Pete Harnish. Do you send the runners here to stay out of the double play. I think I would if you're Brent Maine 
And the runners do run. I think your plays at second base, not third. They are going. Karos a foul tip. Main popped up. I'm sure visions of a strike him out, throw him out in his head, and he couldn't hang on. See, Pazza, uh, Piazza is bothered by the bad knee. So if you're Brent Main, the catcher, and the runners do run and you get the strike, you go for the guy with the bad leg and not for Todd Hollinsworth. Looks like he's looking at third base as he pops up, but he actually never got any leather on that foul tip. Mm -hmm. Going on the last pitch, likely to go again. They are going in Karos another foul. Arnish has walked two in the first inning a stolen base behind him and Eric Karos trying to make him pay for it. Just underway in a long first half inning for Harnish. Three two to Karras. Runners going. That's ball four. The bases are loaded. Three walks in the first inning and Harnish is picking up right where Bobby Jones left off here last night. And that Greg Pavlik hoping that Number Harnish can find the strike right zone. Fielder, Raul here in the first Mondesi. inning bases loaded and Mondesi coming up. I think the very fact that Pete has missed a start is showing here in the first inning. Prior to the first inning here he had walked only seven in 47 innings this year and he's walked three in two thirds of an inning to open this game. So the layoff has affected him it appears. Mondesi steps in. Raul hitting 244 but he has been hot lately and has totaled 12 home runs for the year. That's out of play. Another alarming statistic Tim for Pete Harnish the amount of home runs he has allowed. 10 home runs and only 47 innings pitched coming in. Elementary math tells me that that's a one every 4.7 innings, right? Just made a, an old math teacher proud somewhere across this country. Base is loaded with one out for Mondesi. This time, Harnish jumps out in front 0 and 2. Three walks in the inning, a one out walk to Todd Hollinsworth. He stole second, then a walk to Mike Piazza. He's at second, and a walk to Eric Karras. He's at first. Bases are loaded for Tommy. He just can't wait to explode and start clapping, Tommy Lasorda. And he hopes that Mondesi gives him a reason to clap. 0 oh 2, Pete Harnish wants to go out of the zone to the free swinging Raul Mondesi. Mondesi with only five unintentional walks this year and 221 at bats. When he's a defensive hitter, he will swing at anything. Here comes the 0 2. Wouldn't chase. Mondesi definitely still in that category of an undisciplined hitter. Yeah, you keep dropping the same cork in the water, you keep teasing them away off the plate. And eventually, based on past performances, he should swing at a ball. Chance for Mondesi to put the Dodgers on top here in the first. Bases loaded one out and a one ball two strike count. Spoiled that pitch up and away still one and two. He backed up now at a ball and two strikes. New York Mets a record of 22 and 30 and unfortunately residing in the National League East. To the left side through Jeff Kent and into left. Hollinsworth scores. Here comes Piazza. He'll score. The runners end up at second and third and it's two to nothing Dodgers. the crowd here at Shea all over Jeff Kent already. Well uh, the difference between a boo and an ooh is a bee. And they have booed 14, Jeff Kent lustily here at Shea this year primarily because of his defense. This will go as a double a tough play for Jeff 
But had he made the play, he could have stepped on third and had a chance at Mondesi at first. Instead, Kent gets no one. Two runs come in to score. The other runners end up at second and third, and the batter is Delano to Shields, who hits with the infield in. Good play by Pettigini. Karos doesn't come home. Two out. I don't think that's a good play by the Dodgers. They have a two-run lead. There's one out. The worst that can happen if you send Karos in this situation, first and third, and two outs. Because Pettigini would have to come home. That's why I think the Dodgers should be running right here, especially with the lead. Fact is, you take more chances with the lead than you do when you're behind. If you're behind by one or two runs, you can understand it, but not here. Good play by Pettigini to get the out. So the runner's still at third. That's Karras. Mondesi at second, two out now. And here's Mike Blowers. <laughs> Caught the outside corner, strike one. Flowers started slowly, which really is typical throughout his career. Just a 203 lifetime hitter in April, but has started to heat up. And last night hit a home run here down the right field line for his second National League home run. Chance for a two out RBI hit for Blowers. That's strike two. Say this for Harnished, and he has battled here in the first inning after getting Sedanio walked the bases loaded. Theoretically, could have gotten out of the inning, but he bounced back after Kent couldn't make the play. He got to Shields, and now out in front of Blowers. And again, in fairness, that was a very difficult uh, play for Jeff Kent at third base. Tom Candiotti, I'll tell you, he loves long outs in the top of the first when they're on the road. That means the Dodgers are doing something. 0 2 pitch, and that's out of play. Candiotti notorious for not getting much run support yeah. over the last handful of years. And I'm sure enjoying this first half inning with the Dodgers out in front two to nothing. This has been a 33 pitch inning for Pete Harnish. Second and third two out. Flowers had a pitch to rip, and it'll stay 0 and 2. Yeah, people talk about uh, control, and control doesn't only show up when you don't walk anybody. It also shows up when you can't throw a ball out of the strike zone. Count 0 and 2. An aggressive hitter like Flowers up there. There are times to finesse. There are times to challenge. This is a time to finesse. Second and third, two out. 0 2 to Flowers. Down the right field line. Jones giving it a look. As is Pettigini who makes another good play here in the first to end the inning. Pettigini takes it away from a fan. And the Mets and Pete Harnish out of the first. Two runs for the Dodgers. Tom Candy out to work. Bottom of the first inning. Two to nothing Los Angeles. Dallas Green behind the shades. And his Mets trailing the Dodgers two to nothing. Bottom of the first inning. Here's the lineup Dallas put together before the game. Brought to you by Miller. Lance Johnson leads it off in center field. Jose Vizcaino having a solid year at second base. Bernard Gilkey has been a rock in this lineup. Then it's Jeff Kent batting in the cleanup spot. Roberto Pettigini is at first base. Chris Jones in right field. Brent Main doing the catching. Ray Ordonez is the shortstop, and Pete Harnish pitching and batting ninth. A look at the Dodger defense Hollinsworth Sedano and Mondesi who has that cannon for an arm and right with Blowers Castro to Shields and Karras on the infield Mike Piazza catching and the knuckleballer Tom Candiotti three and four on the mound Tom describes himself as a pitcher that throws a knuckleball he is, he does not say that he is a knuckleball pitcher the best pitch that he gets over as a matter of fact is his curveball his flop drop. Here is Lance Johnson. There's the flop drop. Flop drop to start him off. And a strike. Johnson hitting 308, a home run, 19 RBIs. And the 0 1. Strike two. Lance Johnson, the table setter for the Mets, first year 
in the National League since coming up with the Cardinals made his name with the Chicago White Sox and is now the Mets leadoff hitter batting ahead of his Kaino 0 2 pitch Mike Piazza has the enjoyable task this afternoon of corralling that Tom Candiotti knuckleball with a sore knee one two pitch. Johnson almost came out of his shoes two and two. Well there are a lot of theories about how to catch a knuckleball and I found that the best way to catch a knuckleball was to wait until it was finished breaking catch it as close to your body as you can. And interestingly Duke Snyder told me the, the ex Dodger great and Hall of Famer that he learned to hit a knuckleball by catching a knuckleball. So if it's right to wait as long as you can to catch it then it's right to wait as long as you can to hit it and Duke was a very effective hitter with a knuckleball. Lance Johnson in the back of the batter's box 2 2 pitch jam shot to second no one's at first base and the is and makes a great play. Karras went too far to his right and candy beat Lance Johnson to first base for the first out. He made a great play because he had to catch a low throw find the bag at the same time. Candy taking nothing for granted on that play fine play. How does Candy throw the knuckleball we asked him. The knuckleball for me is held with uh, underneath the horseshoe the ball which we call right here with two three fingers actually two underneath the seams one on the side of the seams and with the thumb kind of tucked underneath and the ball resting into the palm of your hand and just as you release the ball you almost thrust it keeping your wrist a little bit taut and the ball sports off with little or no spin at all. Candiotti took care of his kind on one pitch as he grounded to the left of Juan Castro playing in place of the injured Greg Gagne. Vizcaino who was hitting 330 is the second out here in the first. So with two out nobody on as I mentioned Bernard Gilkey has been it for the Mets day in and day out. 13 home runs 47 RBIs takes a ball no player in Major League Baseball has hit more home runs or driven in more runs with a new team than Bernard Gilkey who came from the Cardinals over the offseason. Drops low 2 and 0. Also you think of all the great hitters in both leagues having terrific years. He leads both leagues in go ahead RBIs too. Two ahead of Albert Bell of the Indians. No chance to do that here. <laughs> Andy Adi finds the strike zone 2 and 1. Flop drop. There are times when it's not 50 50 for Candiotti throwing the knuckleball as opposed to the curveball, but there are times when it's close. That was the curveball, and that's the pop up to center field for Roger Cedeno. A 1 2 3 first inning for Tom Candiotti. The flop drop, and the Mets drop 1 2 3 in the first inning. And after one, it's Shea, 2 to nothing, Los Angeles. Network MCI asks. How do you hit 400? Ground ball to the hole. Another base hit for Alomar. His average hitting 400. Fans are standing and applauding. Network MCI. That's how. Top of the second inning in the first the Dodgers got two runs on one hit helped along by three. Pete Harnish walks and Juan Castro who was five out of thirty two at the plate leads it off. And to left field off the end of the bat at guilty one out. Right now let's go back to Chip Carey in Hollywood for an update on the Seattle Boston game. Chip. OK Joe and Tim baseball's top scoring team at it early. Ken Griffey Jr. doubles to right center field scoring Joey Cora his 45th RBI put the M's up one nothing. But Tim Naring has tied it with a solo homer in the second. Thank you Chip. And the first pitch to Tom Candiotti is fouled back for strike one. Candiotti only two out of 17 at the plate this season.
nothing and two and now Candiotti strikes out. That's the first strikeout of the day for either pitcher and it belongs to Pete Harnish. Center fielder Roger Sedano. So a better start to the second inning. First inning three walks. Did in Harnish and now Roger Sedano walks to the plate. He flied to center to start the game so 0 for 1. Harnish needs one of these quick innings. After a long first, over 30 pitches in the first, Ordonia has a long way to go. Ray Ordonia is the sliding catch and a quick and easy second inning for Pete Harnish. And the defense helps. Ray Ordonez. You'll be hearing a lot from this young man over the years. And Ordonez helps the Mets get out of the second inning. A little slide and a catch. Bottom of the second inning, Mets bat down by two. Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. By Network MCI, how to get modern communications technology working for your business. And by New Miller Beer, the brand new beer from Miller with big flavor that goes down easy. Number four position, third baseman, number 12. Welcome back to New York Shea Stadium, bottom of the second inning, two to nothing. The Dodgers out in front. Back to work is Tom Candiotti. Had a quick and easy first inning, and they're booing Jeff Kent as he leads it off here in the second. Can't let a ball get by him in the first inning for a two run double by Mondesi, producing the two to nothing Dodger lead. Flowers. One away. Oh, you heard the boo of Jeff Kent and then the ooh of Ray Ardonias. That's really what the O is for on the back of his uniform. When he makes plays here at Shea Stadium, the crowds go, oh, baby. He can flat pick it. He's flashy and he's very, very smart as a player. One of the many good young shortstops coming up in the big leagues. You've got Ordonez, you've got Jeter across town, you've got Renteria, who a lot of people haven't heard of yet, but is playing for the Marlins and keeping Kurt Abbott in the minor leagues. You've got Rodriguez, Gonzalez, Pettigini at the plate ahead on the count 2 0. You're right about Ordonez, though. You can tell he was trained well when he learned the game of baseball. He knows where to stand. He knows where to play. He knows the situation. To the right side, a fair ball for Karras to Candiotti. Five up, five down for Candiotti. I guess the first O with Ordonez opening day. Gilkey, and look at that from his knees again. The nail Royce Clayton. On a potential tying run at home plate. Guy's a tough time making plays on his feet. Well, he has that rare ability to be able to throw the ball from any position. Does not need to have balance to get the ball across yeah, the infield. Yeah, Joe, he gets the ball in the throwing position across the seams very, very quickly. He has as quick a hands and feet as any young player I've ever seen. Two out, nobody on for Chris Jones, the right fielder, batting in the sixth spot. He takes ball one low. Jones is as good a right handed pinch hitter as there is in this league. Three out of five as a pinch hitter, as a matter of fact, but hitting only 209 overall. <laughs> one and one. Chris led the National League last year with a 400 average, 10 for 25 as a pinch hitter, and that included three pinch hit home runs. Golfs that one into center field for Sedano. Finds it, shades the eyes, and that'll do it for the Mets in the second. Six up, six down against Candiotti. We'll be back to Shea Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Fox Saturday Baseball. The Dodgers two first inning runs leading two to nothing over the Mets as we move to the third the number two hitter in the lineup Todd Hollinsworth leads it off Piazza and Karos to follow out of play strike one Pete Harnish fresh off his eight game suspension we talked about and he is a New Yorker happy to be pitching with the Mets at Shea. 29 years old from Comac New York and went to Fordham University. 
Collinsworth got under it into right center field for Lance Johnson. One up one down and now Pete Harnish starting to settle into this game. He's retired six in a row since that double by Mondesi in the first. I guess Dodger fans can relate to Fordham University. Because back in 1951 a young announcer came out of Fordham. And has been there ever since. Vin Scully. Vinny not here today but uh, he will greet the Dodgers when they return on Tuesday night. Here is Piazza. One out nobody on for Mike who walked and scored a run. In that two run first inning. Harnish took care of Hollinsworth and now Piazza hits it deep to left. At the wall Gilkey can't hang on. And Piazza with the bad knee will end up with only a one out single. Any line drive off his bat has the chance to jump out of the ballpark. It explodes off the bat. And you know there's a lot of talk about team errors in baseball. I think this error ought to be on the wall in left field. Should be a wall error. Because it's in the glove. No, nope, it came out before he hit the wall. But it's clearly a base hit, a tough chance for Gilkey, who is a marvelous left fielder defensively. So now one on one out for Eric Karros. Strike one from Harnish. Karros his first time walked and was stranded. Piazza with a bad knee could only get the single and it would take a lot to score him from first base off the bat of Eric Karros. And you have to wonder Joe why Pettigini is holding uh, Mike on at first base. I mean it's been talked about a lot the bad right knee certainly not going anywhere. Strike two on Karras. There are a lot of teams who at times unnecessarily hold against a runner who you know is going nowhere. I think so. And that is one who we know will not be running. Not in this situation. And a right for Jones. Taking the roundabout way and can't make the catch a foul ball. And Chris Jones looked like a pinch hitter playing right field. Well, the Mets have had all sorts of problems with their right fielders this year. Butch Husky won the job from Carl Everett in spring training when he had nine home runs, but a rather circuitous route that Chris took to try to corral that ball, and it's off his glove, but a ball that should have been handled, and it's going to be scored an error. So an error charged to Chris Jones. That doesn't help out Pete Harnish who has to try to get Karras again. Two balls two strikes. And the Mets cannot stand toe to toe with the Dodgers. They can't out slug them. So they have to find the smaller things in the game to perfect and certainly Dallas Green knows that. You just can't give a team four outs in an inning and expect to beat them. Got him again. Good work by Harnish didn't hang his head came back to pick up his second strikeout and the second out here in the third. Right fielder Ralph Mondesi. Slider out of the strike zone. I'd say about 70% of swinging strikeouts are on balls that are out of the strike zone. That's because hitters are geared to hit the ball in the strike zone. That's when the art of deception is so important for a pitcher. Here's Mondesi. Pops it up. Right side for Pettigini. Fights the sun. Makes the catch even with Mondesi sitting in his hip pocket. So that'll do it. As Pettigini catches the fair ball, bottom of the third inning, Mets bat, they trail by two. The key to successful comedy is timing. The same holds true for hockey. A great pass reaches the player just at the moment he's open. Time. Ow. Not yet! Hockey. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. The Stanley Cup Finals begin Tuesday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox. Match bat, bottom of the third inning, 2 to nothing. The Dodgers out in front behind Candiotti, and Brent Main will lead off. Bottom three in the order. Main, Ordonez, and Harnish. And for those of you who do not get the opportunity to see Ken Griffey Jr. bat, we'll look in live in Seattle at his at bat. 
Griffey an RBI double his first time up and he too is having to deal with a knuckleball. Joey Cora the runner at third and trying to figure out the knuckleball from Tim <laughs> Wakefield. There's a runner at third one out for Griffey. It's a one one game and Griffey will see another pitch. This is something that perhaps will be unnecessary next year because of the introduction of interleague play. A lot of National League teams will be able to see Ken Griffey live next year. Well, Griffey has been hot coming into today's game, his last 10 games, hitting 462 with eight home runs and 21 RBIs. So Griffey grounds out. Cora scores and an RBI. Get the ball. He made an out. He made an out, but he got an RBI. It's a two RBI day so far for Ken Griffey Jr. Maine waits on a pitch, grounds it to DeShields. Good play. One out. Delano DeShields has made only one error and makes a terrific play to his right. Sometimes other sports skills come into play in baseball. DeShields was recruited by Villanova. That looks like a steal by DeShields right there. And he threw it the length of the court to get Brent Maine. So that's seven in a row retired by Candiotti here at the start. Helped out by his defense. And now with one out nobody on here is Ray Ordonez. Did not have a good year at the plate last year at Triple A, but Tim, he is hitting 312. Leads all rookies in hits and average. Last Mets rookie to hit over 300 was Hubie Brooks. And Ordonez right now has to be the leading candidate for National League Rookie of the Year, but there is a long way to go. I wonder how many knuckleballers Ordonez saw in Cuba. <laughs> I don't know. He defected in 1993 during the Pan American Games in Buffalo, New York. And a very interesting story. One of eight boys and none of the other seven children played baseball. But Ray has told me through an interpreter that his father was a better shortstop than he is. To which I replied, nonsense in English. <laughs> no disrespect for your dad, but I don't think your dad can do the things that you can do. You said nonsense in English. He said no thanks. <laughs> had no idea what you were saying. <laughs> One out, nobody on for Ordonez. Set up at a ball and two strikes. Two and two. Of course, some great uh, Cuban players: Tony Perez, Tony Oliva. A great player who, in my opinion, should be in the Hall of Fame. What a hitter he was. <laughs> and then lately with the defectors out of Cuba, Rene Rocha with the Cardinals started that train as Ordonez takes ball three. Ariel Prieto was next with Oakland. And how good is Ordonez among National League rookies leading the way? Batting in the number eight spot and I like what the Mets have done they put him in that eight spot and just left him there and he takes ball four for a one out walk and that's the first base runner of the day for New York. I would imagine there's been some temptation by Dallas Green Tim you've got a guy hitting 312 to move him up in the order but they're just letting him take it easy in the number eight spot and so far it's working out well. I think I think he will probably be the number eight hitter until a season unfolds for Dallas Green and and sees if he does it over the course of a season. I think if you put him in the number two slot that again is a little too much pressure on a first year player. So one on one out against Candiotti and the pitcher Pete Harnish at the plate who was hitless in his last 30 at bats but there to bunt. He finds the knuckleball and bunts a good one. Sacrifice good one three. And down to second is Ordonez with two out. Joe, I think that was that flop drop, and that's really the easiest pitch to bunt. Center fielder Lance Johnson. That's the curveball that, uh, that uh, I guess you could say it, it goes from the mezzanine to the lobby. You can check it at home. Here's the mezzanine. There's the lobby. And watch the curveball to Pete Harnish. 
mezzanine to lobby. I don't know. Don't ask me about the knuckleball. It stays on the same floor, but it visits a lot of different rooms. <laughs> I'm speechless. Strike one on Lance Johnson. Mezzanine to the lobby yep. down by the trash can near the elevator. And a bunt and a sacrifice and a runner at second for Lance Johnson who could put the Mets on the board here in the third. Lance 0 for 1. Ball and a strike. This Kaino waits on deck, but it's up to Lance Johnson to keep the inning alive. Lance has 19 RBIs. Stayed high, two and one. Ordonia has a one out walk, bunted down to second by Harnish, but the Mets still looking for their first hit of the day. Infielders reminded in this position that if you can't make a play on a ground ball, knock it down to keep Ordonia's from scoring. Two one to Johnson. Into left field, falling in a hurry. That's a hit. Ordonez will come in and score. Down to second is Johnson, and it's a two to one Dodger lead. First hit of the day produces the Mets' first run. You hear it often that outfielders should hit the cutoff man. Well, the Dodgers don't even have a cutoff man. You got to ask the question where was Mike Blowers on that play with the base hit the other way? There was no cutoff man. Hollinsworth's play was home and Johnson goes to second base. Flowers really should be the cutoff man there but nobody's there. And Johnson takes advantage of it by going to second base. You really can't fault Hollinsworth in that situation. Somebody has got to be between him and the catcher. And it's a big defensive mistake because now the tying run is in scoring position right. for Vizcaino. Right. Who's hitting 3-28. Takes a strength that caught the inside corner. This Kaino grounded a short his first time up. Tying run at second. Lance Johnson, two out. Ball and a strike. You see, these Mets hitters are patient, not jumping out of their shoes to. Try to hit that knuckleball or the curveball against Candiotti. Getting coach Tom McCraw. Strike two. How about up the middle? Ordonez, Vizcaino, hoping that combination, the Mets are, hoping that combination will tie the game here in the third inning. And I would say three of those four combinations are surprises. The Baltimore one being expected. One and two on Vizcaino. In to center field. Johnson will score without a play and we're tied at two. Tim, they had Vizcaino played up the middle, and he still got it past the shortstop. And, and remember the point we made a couple of hitters ago with two outs and the runner on at second base. You try to knock the ball down if you can't make a play. That's what Castro tried to do. But the ball just out of his reach. But the throwing mistake by Hollinsworth, which was more a mistake by the Dodgers not having a cutoff man there, has burned them for at least one run here in the second inning. And now or third inning. But keeps the inning alive for Bernard Gilkey. Bernard has driven in 47 runs, hit 13 home runs, and he takes the ball. I'll tell you how funny the game of baseball is and how important the little things are. Castro would have been even closer to second base had Johnson been at first, and he perhaps would have fielded the ball by Vizcaino. As it happened, Johnson was on at second, and he scores the run. Off the end of the bat, one ball, one strike. Mark Clark having to get out of the way of that. Save for Bobby Jones. And a 1-1 count on Gilkey, who has the go-ahead run at first and two out. Wooden 
Chase two and one. I would imagine Tim before the end of the end of the day the shadows coming from behind home plate and creeping across home plate will become a factor. Yeah fortunately for both teams there are not hard throwers as starters. Candiotti of course does not throw hard. Pete Harnish 85 is tops on the radar gun. Gilkey waited flies to right for Mondesi. That'll end the inning. But the Mets a two out rally. It started with a one out walk. RBIs by Johnson and Vizcaino. And now after three at Shea. Dodgers and Mets are tied at two. I talked earlier about Vin Scully not being here this afternoon. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. I am so sorry. Vinny is indeed here. I didn't see him before the game. I did, did see Ross Porter. I saw Rick Monday. I didn't see Vinny. I assumed that he was in L.A. and would meet the Dodgers in L.A. And obviously he'll be there. He came in between innings. He said, I checked my watch. I'm here. <laughs> he is here. We've verified that. <laughs> Visually. Oh, boy. Delano DeShields leads it off. It'll be DeShields, Blowers, and Castro, the six, seven, and eight hitters for the Dodgers here in the fourth. And a shields behind on the count 0 and 2. Strikeouts are starting to pile up again for Delano to shields. 47 strikeouts. And that's one of the reasons that Delano to shields is not hitting at the top of the lineup. One of Delano's heroes as he should be is Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson of course broke the color barrier back in 1947 a big man for a second baseman and someone who Delano DeShields really looks up to Butch Husky as well that's why he wears the number 42 one ball two strikes the count on DeShields well hit but right at Vizcaino. And the leadoff man is gone. Now I know Jackie Robinson was known to be pigeon toed. Delano to Shields is a bit pigeon toed. Does that mean that if you have a hero, you have to walk like? <laughs> have to walk like him? Well, Tom Trish tried to walk like Mickey Mantle. Marvin Thronberry tried to walk like Mickey Mantle. So maybe indeed, uh, that, but, you know, when you get around to it, how many great athletes are not pigeon toed? You don't see too many good. Athletes where their feet go out are slew footed athletes, as you saw Butch Husky in number 42. Blowers hits it deep down the right field line. It is gone. Another opposite field home run for Mike Blowers. He did it last night. He does it today. And the Dodgers regain the lead. It's three to two. Mike Blowers is as streaky a hitter as there is in baseball. He started out slowly, but right now he is a very hot number seven hitter. Shortstop Juan Castro. Two run homer to right field in last night's game. And a solo shot to right field. Last night's ball was a little higher than that one. Doesn't matter how far, just if it clears. Home run number three for Blowers. That registered 89 miles per hour on the radar gun. Blowers or Harnish? Harnish. It left a little quicker and that by the way is the hardest pitch Harnish has thrown today. And that shows you what you can do with the velocity of a pitch. Doesn't mean much if it isn't in the right spot. Castro one ball one strike count. Joe I think velocity is important for guys coming back off rehab things like that to determine arm strength but it's way down in determining how to get a hitter out. Movement, location, deception, control of your breaking ball behind in the count, throwing something other than a fastball and a fastball hitting count. Now Castro going deep down the left field line. One Castro foul. And a 2 2 count. Castro thought he had his first. Just did die foul down the left field line.
Arnish talking it foul. And happy at strike two instead of home run number two for the Dodgers here in the fourth. It regained the lead 3 2 and a home run by Blowers, just his third of the year. Now Castro pops it into left for Gilkey. Two out. Pitcher Tom Cantiani. Juan Castro getting a chance to play because of the ankle sprain by Greg Gagne. Castro called up, getting a chance to start it short. Gagney about as good a defensive shortstop as the Dodgers have had in the last 20 years. Well, two holes needed to be plugged by Fred Clare, the general manager of the Dodgers. One was third base with Tim Wallach moving on. And he traded for Mike Blowers and then signed Greg Gagney as a free agent. So he really shored up the left side, but Gagney on the DL right now. Candiotti hits it well into right center field, but Lance Johnson. Easy for the center fielder to end the inning. A one out home run by Mike Flowers. Last year was with Seattle. This year with the Dodgers. It's his second home run in as many games, his third of the year. The Dodgers regain the lead 3 2. Check out the very first episode of Mad TV. No poison rules! TV late night tonight on Fox. Sunday, June 23rd, a one of a kind international sporting event. Join John Madden, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, James Brown, Matt Millen, and Kevin Harlan for World Bowl 96 NFL style action. American players from Europe, the championship of the World League on Fox. Leading Bottom of the fourth the inning, the Dodgers are yeah. back out in front. Home run ball off the bat of Mike Blowers and Tommy Lasorda. And the Dodgers out in front 3 2. Bottom of the fourth inning, it will be the heart of the order 4 5 and 6. Kent, Pettigini, and Jones. Jeff Kent is 0 for 1. Hitting 261. Knuckler fouled off to the right, strike one. Jeff Kent, guy who came up as a second baseman. Hit 20 home runs with the Mets last year. So far, he has hit five. That is well hit into left field, but not good enough as Hollinsworth back to get it. So one out, and Pettigini coming up. On Monday night, Fox invites you to enter a world where courage isn't an option, it's a way of life. If you ever wondered what makes a hero, you're about to find out. Don't miss the series premiere of the new Fox drama, L.A. Firefighters. Monday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Here is Pettigini. Hitless as a Met, 0 for 5. Made his first start here last night, playing because of Rico Bronia's problem with his right shoulder. Rico Bronia with his second cortisone shot in that shoulder two days ago, describing that shot before the game and not pleasant. Rico shares the disdain for needles that I do. Oh, one to Pettigini, who has been with Houston and with San Diego, sitting over 340 at AAA. Mets called him up, and he's made two starts in a row. And the reason the Mets called up Pettigini was so they could lead Butch Husky in right field and allow him to adjust further. And a right center for a base hit. Pettigini's first as a Mets, and he's on with one out here in the fourth. So the tying run is on for New York with Chris Jones coming up. And go figure, the day after Pettigini comes up, Chris Jones is playing right field and not Bush, Butch Husky. So things change rather rapidly depending on what you've done for me lately as Pettigini gets his first hit as a Met. Chris Jones at the plate, 0 for 1, and his average only at 2.05. Trying to figure out Candiotti here in the fourth inning. Strike one. Mike Covage through the signs in his third base coaching box. Talked earlier about the fact the Mets can't go toe to toe against the Dodgers in the power department. 
I think they have to run more, even with guys who can't run very fast. Pettigini being in that category. Try to manufacture something against Absolutely. this Dodger team. Well, you, you think of the elements against Mike Piazza throwing a runner out with a knuckleball. If Dallas Green can guess knuckleball, the bad right knee, he's using that big mitt in which to catch a knuckleball. Not only is a knuckleball tough to catch, but because of the big glove, a catcher can't find the ball in those big mitts. One on, one out. And that's ball one. Chris Jones is a piece of the puzzle, which really is just that a puzzle here in New York of who is going to be playing right field. Husky, a part of it. Carl Everett is in that proverbial doghouse. Chris Jones, Kevin Roberson was just sent down when they called up Pettigini and combined only eight home runs out of that right field position. Actually, only five home runs as right fielders because three of those home runs came as pinch hitters, one by Chris Jones. Jones now with a 2 2 count. Pettigini the runner at first with one out. Into center field, and Jones gets his first hit of the day. And now the go ahead run is on with a tying run in scoring position. Chris's father makes golf clubs in Syracuse New York and he goes down and golfs this one to center field. Chris's dad a retired postal employee and in his retirement for the last four years he makes golf clubs and I understand Chris Jones can hit a golf ball out of sight. I would imagine as yeah. most can in this game although yep. some of them have no idea where they're going to land. <laughs> Two on with one out for Brent Maine. Takes a ball. Maine hitting 278. And he is what teams look for a left handed hitting backup catcher. Frontline catcher for the Mets is Todd Hundley, the switch hitting catcher, who has been slumping. 2 0 on Maine. Candiotti in some fourth inning trouble. Well, we talked about it earlier. When Candiotti needs a strike, he throws the curveball. So we'll see if that's what Brent Maine gets right here. Two on, one out, and now ball three, three and zero. Oh. He got it, and Candiotti missed with it. Candiotti has to throw a strike behind on the count, three and zero. Oh. That is well hit into right field, but did he pull it foul? He did. Maine has hit one home run this season. And he almost hit his second to put the Mets on top. That's a batting practice fastball. Tom Candiotti does not throw hard. Just pleading with a baseball to stay fair. I heard of body English. That's facial English. Got out in front to count three and one. You think you'll see another fastball? Ground ball to second might be two. Inning over. Four, six, three. De Shields to Castro on to Keros. So Candiani gets help with a double play ball. And after four, the Dodgers still lead 3 2. Ned and Stacy are back. No! Same day. Oh, mommy. New time. I need to have sex. Don't look at me. Ned and Stacy, Monday at 8 7 Central. We're into the fifth inning. The Dodgers bat. They lead 3-2. Now between innings, Dave Wallace, the pitching coach for the Dodgers, went over to talk to Tom Candiotti. A knuckleballer's got to be the most lonely guy on a pitching staff. What yeah. possibly could Dave Wallace be telling him? I, I have no idea. He may be talking about his left leg. Pitching coaches see pitchers long enough to where they may not know about grip of a knuckleball, but see he's pointing to the front side of his body and a leg lift. I think, so I think he's that's saying... A, I think he's saying after the game we'll go into the city have dinner. My treat if you can hang on to this 3 2 lead we're in the fifth inning. And the top of the order Roger Sedano leads it off then Hollinsworth then Piazza. 
So Daniel five hits last night. Oh for two today. Caught the knees one ball one strike. We mentioned Cedeno with five hits in last night's game. The last Dodger with five hits, Brett Butler, back on April 20th, 1994. 1 1 to Cedeno. Strike two. The doctors and the Dodgers were very encouraged by the news on the follow up surgery to remove lymph nodes from the throat of Brett Butler following the removal of a cancerous tumor around his tonsil. There's one guy I wouldn't bet against. It would be Brett Butler. Harnish beats Sedeno to the bag for the first out here in the fifth inning. If Brett Butler says he's going to try to come back and play this year, I do not bet against him. And a, uh, a player that both Dodger fans and Met fans are familiar with. He was with the Mets last year, but when he was with the Dodgers against Todd Huntley, watch this catch. That's the type of player he was. That was a real catch 22 right there, by the way. Oh, sorry. That was in 1994. I did that for Brett. Ball one to Hollinsworth. I'm sure he appreciated it. Now, I'm not I'm not suggesting that this could have happened, but when Brett was hanging over the wall for quite a while. I'm, has anybody ever asked if that was the ball that Hunley hit or did a fan just toss it to him? <laughs> Hollinsworth grounds it up the middle of one out base hit. And Hollinsworth on base for the second time today. Right now, we'll take you back to Hollywood and Chip Carey for an update. Chip. Joe and Tim, there's a new homer and RBI leader in the American League. Mo Vaughn just went upper deck at the Kingdom off Bob Malacki, a three run job, 21 homers, 59 RBIs. It's now a 5 2 Red Sox lead in the fifth. Back to you at Shea. Thank you, Chip. Well, Boston comes into that game nine games out behind the New York Yankees. Baltimore a game out Toronto in the middle Boston off to that terrible start trying to regroup when you are that far below the 500 mark it is tough to make up ground and tough to get back into a race well you don't think long term it's difficult in this game when you play 162 game schedule to think long term anyway you try to make it all up with one pop it's like a football team being down. 27 to nothing going into the second half and trying to score 27 points on one play or a hitter trying to hit a five run homer. You have to do that collectively and that is a very important element of how to approach baseball on a day to day basis. Check on Hollinsworth. Who was the last player to hit a five run homer? <laughs> Mike Shannon. <laughs> your partner in St. Louis. Anybody could do it. The Mooner could do it. One on one out for Piazza. Mike's been on base twice for the walk and a hit. Dodgers batting and leading 3 2 here in the fifth. Harnish trying to make that perfect pitch to Piazza. He walked him his first time. Mike got a base hit his next off the wall in left field, off the glove of Gilkey, then off the wall. And again, Harnish falls behind 2 0. Little red dot on first base, representative of Todd Hollinsworth, who sees a throw come over from Pete Harnish. Look at the other scores from around Major League Baseball. There's that Boston Seattle score. That caught the corner, two and one. You also saw the Cleveland Indians with a rare loss, two to one, last night. Albert Bell going into Fernando Vina after being hit by a pitch and a scuffle ensued at second base and then Bell being hit in the ninth inning again and then Tavares their reliever throwing behind a Milwaukee batter and both benches emptied in a big brawl in Milwaukee. Mike Matheny the catcher for yeah. Milwaukee out first he slipped on the mound then got up and just delivered. One on one out two one to Piazza now three and one and Harnish back into trouble. I would not send Hollinsworth on this pitch. I think Piazza should have every luxury of looking at the ball without the distraction of the runner running and have a chance to choose a pitch on a three one count. 
Three one pitch the runner is going. Strike two and Hollinsworth steals his second of the day. So the Dodgers are taking advantage of Todd Hundley's day off as Brent Maine is now 0 for 11 in throwing out base stealing. But a case could be made that Piazza swung at this pitch with the diversion of having to look at the runner running. I think uh, I, I don't agree with a power hitter up there a guy who's locked in like Piazza to be running on a 2 0 or a 3 1 count. I think those are real offensive counts for the hitter. Now a 3 2 count on Piazza. That's out of play. The right handed hitter should have the luxury of selecting his pitch. I don't think that was his pitch, not because he swung through it, but you're just too anxious with the runner running. You're more inclined to protect the runner, and I don't think a 3 1 counts the pitch situation to do that in. Again, a full count. Hollinsworth at second, one out here in the fifth. Chase that one, still three and two. Shadows are a creeping. Just about to the mound. Arnish trying to pitch around a one out hit and a stolen base by Hollinsworth and he's trying to get Piazza and Caros who waits on deck. Three balls two strikes and Piazza once more time. Mike Piazza his second game back from the midweek knee injury in Philadelphia. Something that had been nagging him for the better part of the last month. Got two out. And the third strikeout for Harnish none bigger than that one. First baseman Eric Carroll. Pete Harnish reaching back and throwing the fastball right by him. Ball jumped a little bit. Yep, had a little hop on it. And Piazza's the second out here in the fifth inning. Hollinsworth still at second for Karras. Eric was frozen on strike one. Eric 0 for 1 with that walk. Looking for RBI number 30. One from Harnish moved him off the plate. And not every pitch is designed to get a hitter out. That pitch, for instance, was just a show me pitch inside off the plate to set up the breaking ball and the fastball away from Karos. One and one again. the count. Back inside and missed again. Two and one. Karos had a breakthrough year last year. Hit just under 300, 298. 32 home runs and 105 RBIs. And he sees good pitching and good pitches to hit with Piazza hitting in front of him, Mondesi hitting behind him. To the right side for Vizcaino. And the inning is over. A one out hit by Hollinsworth. The Dodgers strand their fourth of the day. We're halfway through it at Shea. Bottom of the fifth inning. Mets bat trailing by one. Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of the all new triple decaroni pizza. Have one delivered today. By new Speed Stick Gel by Menon. It's the best gel protection and it's just for the guys. By Pepsi AC Acid Controller. You can be heartburn free with Pepsi AC. And by Fruit of the Loom, maker of really, really comfortable clothes. Welcome back to Shea. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without express written consent. Notice that disclaimer said the Office uh, of the Commissioner. You did it. Right? I wasn't going to say it. There is no surname involved. <laughs> Here is Ray Ordonia as the number eight hitter. Harnish and Johnson to follow. Donez 
A one out walk his first time to help along a rally. Both Mets runs scored with two out in the third. RBIs by Johnson and Vizcaino. The time that tied the game. Flowers has hit his third home run of the year to put the Dodgers back up top. They lead 3 2. Nothing. Ordonez. A 3 12 hitter. Back to Candiotti. One up, one down. Ordonia is the first out here in the fifth inning and Harnish coming up. We talked about that big glove that Mike Piazza uses. Back in 1964, there was a rule change, a change to limit the size of a catcher's mitt. Now a catcher's mitt can be no larger than 38 inches in circumference and 15 inches from the heel to the tops of the fingers with the glove laid open, splayed. One out, nobody on. Pete Harnish at the plate. Trying to bunt his way on, and Candiotti will take care of it. Two down. Candiotti is the Dodgers starter, and well, he's right handed, which is the way things have gone for the Dodgers since 1992 September 24th 1992 was the last time the Dodgers had a left handed starter 486 straight starts without a left handed starter Bobby Ojeda was the last left hander to start for Los Angeles that of course is a record far and away two out nobody on for Lance Johnson to the right side for Karras. Good play. Can Candy out of get there? Yes. And the Mets go in order in the fifth. Defense has helped out Candy out today for Los Angeles. And now after five in New York, Karras to Candy out And a one, two, three Mets fifth. Dodgers lead by one. These three manly bachelors just found the woman of their dreams. Your ad didn't mention anything about the sex of the roommates. What do you want to know? The Last Frontier, series premiere Monday. Into the sixth inning, Dodgers leading 3-2. The defense has helped out Tom Candiotti today. How about the sights and sounds of the play made by Caro and Candiotti? Sounds of silence. Mondesi digs in to lead it off in the sixth inning. Ball one to Mondesi. So we will be bringing you that sound at times throughout the season. The mic'd bases. And it was a good defensive play by Eric Karos. Off the end of the bat. Off the bat of Mondesi. One up, one down. As Vizcaino makes the play to his left. And Mondesi's one for three. Raul Mondesi still fighting to get into that groove. He's the first out here in the sixth inning for Delano to Shields. Delano, most of his career has been a one or a two hitter, but because of the strikeouts, they've had to move him down in the batting order. Shields hitting in the sixth spot here. Delano led the Montreal Expos and led the league in strikeouts with 151 in 1991. Got away from it. Now he's going back to piling up the strikeouts, so he's back in the order. A little high, one ball, one strike. Hitting in the one and two hole, you are more concerned with on base percentage than average. The 1 1 from Harnish. Pete falls behind. Harnish had a long first inning, walk three, allowed a two run double to Mondesi. But he has really rebounded and pitched a strong game since the first. Bulldog tenacity, one of the real leaders with the Mets. Now 
a 2 2 count. Not only a leader on the field, Tim, but a vocal guy in the clubhouse and not afraid to get on somebody. Now, the, the unfortunate thing about that is he's a pitcher. John Franco, another pitcher, one of the leaders with the Mets. The Mets really don't have a leader as far as a regular player is concerned. Todd Hunley is as close to that as you get. Right at Vizcaino, good play. Two out. Bernard Gilkey could work himself into that as a leader, and so could Lance Johnson. Back in the fourth inning, the Dodgers regain the lead on a one-out home run by Mike Blowers. Went the other way as he did here last night. Last night a two-run shot. Today a solo blast in the fourth, third of the year, and that has the Dodgers out in front 3-2 here in the sixth. Two out, nobody on for Mike. And strike one from Pete Arnish. Flowers very good defensively. Terrific arm at third base. And a big part of the effort for the Dodgers to improve their defense from years past. They've always had the great pitching, but they haven't had the good defense to go along with it. Mentioned Jose Offerman. The past five years was a shortstop before this year. Greg Gagney and Mike Blowers obtained to shore up the defense on the left side. That last pitch, by the way, a purpose pitch by Harnish. He will come inside. That's what that does. You come inside on the 0 1 pitch, and then a hittable pitch becomes a pitch that a hitter will take, and that's what Blowers did. Fastball inside, slider on the outside part. There are catchers who have told me Tim that if you can straighten up Blowers you can hit the outside part of the plate and he just can't reach it. Behind on the count one and two he can't reach it. And strikes out to end the top of the sixth inning. Fourth strikeout for Harnish. He needs some runs. Bottom of the sixth inning Mets bat they trail by one. of the sixth inning the Mets have the two three and four hitters against Candiotti trailing three two and the Dodger right hander back to work. Candiotti has allowed two runs on four hits. He's been helped out by good defense. And Vizcaino first up one out of two. Candiotti no strikeouts today and only one walk. Jose Vizcaino with his first RBI in June. This, of course, being June 1st. And the reason I say that he's off to a good start, he had two RBIs for the month of May. Up the middle to Shields. Can't handle it. And Vizcaino on to start the inning. See how they rule that. Could be a hit or an error. It's a base hit. So Vizcaino, two out of three. I think that's a good call. The Shields had to go far to his right. The ball hits the heel of the glove. And Vizcaino with an infield hit, his second hit of the ball game. The Shields has committed only one error in 52 games this season, and he's gone 48 straight without an error. So that keeps the string alive. And here is Gilkey with a tying run on and nobody out. Vizcaino running. Which you can do against a knuckleball type pitcher. And that's strike one on Gilkey. First time the Mets had tried to steal in this game, but that was a hit and run. Mets are not a particularly fast ball club, but when they do run, it's usually part of a hit and run play. Lead off base hit by Vizcaino. Gilkey took a ball one and one. Will the Mets 
start the runner again. Vizcaino was running on the first pitch, was not on ball one to Gilkey. Gilkey has hit 13 home runs, and Candiotti checks on Vizcaino, who has stolen five bases this season. Candiotti has gone six straight starts without anyone stealing against him. Good move to first base. Center field pretty well hit. Sedeno back to make the catch. A wonderful grab in right center field for the first out here in the sixth. Roger Sedeno takes an extra base hit away from Bernard Gilkey. That was a good catch, but a very unsure catch. Third baseman Jeff Kent. It looked like the ball hit the heel of the glove and he corrals it. it he ends up barehanding the ball. The ball hit off the heel of the glove and it hit the torso of Sedeno. So he ended up catching it. It didn't look pretty, but he got the job done. It's a one ball, one strike count on Griffey as he digs in. He has two RBIs today, still facing Tim Wakefield. And Griffey up for Seattle. The Mariners trailing 6 2 in that game with Boston. Ken Griffey Jr. as I mentioned last 10 games into today 20 RBIs he has two today and he hits one off the wall in right so Griffey a double that's his second hit of the day to go along with his two RBIs and we bring it back to full screen action with the Dodgers and the Mets. One out for Jeff Kent. Lead off hit by Vizcaino, then Gilkey robbed by Sedeno in right center. And Candiotti keeping an eye on Vizcaino. You would think that opposition, that the opposition would rack up stolen bases against a knuckleball type pitcher because if you guess right, the catcher has literally no chance to throw you out. Well, we said earlier that uh, we thought the Mets should run a little more. So far, they've only run one time or attempted it. Running here, the Shields out at first base. Frank Howard arguing, the first base coach arguing that Caros came off the bag and now Dallas Green is hot and after Charlie Williams. The Shields made the play on the third base side of second base. And the only question is whether Caros kept his foot on the base. The ball actually hit the heel of Tom Candiotti. It was not through, it was through the wickets, but it hit part of the wicket going through. With Vizcaino running, the Shields going over to cover. And since he was there and the ball caroms off the Foot of Candiotti, the Shields makes a terrific play. Off the heel of Candiotti, the Shields on the bag, the bare hand pickup. It was very close at first base. He was out. Did Karras have his foot on the bag? No, he was safe. I thought he pulled his foot off the bag. I, I thought agree. the throw beat him, but I thought Karras pulled his foot off the bag. Yeah, there is no doubt the throw from the Shields beat the runner, Kent, to the bag. Now Pettigini grounds one through the right side. Here comes Vizcaino. The throw by Mondesi, no good. Down to second, Pettigini. That throw, no good, and we're tied at three. <laughs> A two out RBI hit by Roberto Pettigini to tie the game here in the sixth. Pettigini's second hit in a row. Dallas Green trying to cool down after that argument with Charlie Williams, the first base umpire. Good base running by Pettigini. Right. Keep in mind that Raul Mondesi has led the National League outfielders in assists for the last two years, 94 and 5. And that throw off to the first base side, Vizcaino scores, and the throw by Piazza to try to get Pettigini too late at second. And now
Chris Jones at the plate with a chance to give the Mets their first lead of the day. That is well hit into left. The Mets will take the lead. Pettigini scores. Jones has a double, and it's four to three New York here in the sixth. So the Pettigini hit scores Viscaino, and now the double by Chris Jones on the knuckleball. Stayed inside. Chris hammers it down the left field line, scoring Pettigini easily as the Mets take the lead for the first time in this game. Pettigini, his first two hits as a Met. Now the Dodgers will walk Brent May. Tommy Lasorda would rather pitch to Ray Ordonez. This is an interesting play because the percentages got a left hander there who does not hit a lot. Brent Main is not the regular catcher. As a matter of fact, he's been up only 37 times this year, and Ray Ordonez is hitting 311. So I'm not the, too sure I would do this. I, I know, you know, traditional uh, baseball reasoning is you got a left hander like Maine and then a right hander, as you see Chan Ho Park, the right hander warming George for Scott the Dodgers. But Ardonia's is a battler, and you can't walk him in this situation. He's only walked six times this year. A good bad ball hitter and a good hitter for the first two months of the 96 season. Brent Maine had grounded out twice. Once into a double play, they elect to put Maine on and pitch to Ordonez, who is a 300 hitter. In his rookie season, he's driven in 10. A little anxious, strike one. Ordonez, a chance to add to the Mets' lead here in the sixth. Two on, two out. Wow. Last one really danced. Now the 0 1. Saved by Piazza. One ball, one strike. You've got the pitcher, Pete Harnish, on deck. But the only base that is open, third base. Warming up for the Mets in their bullpen. Two on, two out. Ordonez into right center. Sedeno over to get it, and the inning is over. The Mets take the lead for the first time today. Two runs on three. It's a walk to left. They've stranded four. And now after six, the Mets are out in front. We'll be back to Shea after these messages from your local station. You're watching Fox Saturday Baseball. The 10 o'clock news tonight on Fox 5. We're into the seventh inning with the Mets out in front. Four to three. Two run bottom of the sixth inning. Here is today's men in trivia question. Who are the only two players who hit 25 or more career home runs for both the Mets and the Dodgers. The answer either later this inning depending on what happens or sometime before we're finished here today next inning. Juan Castro leads it off took a ball. And now hits one off the end of the bat into shallow left. Ordonez one away. Dodgers now are going to lift their starting pitcher Tom Candiotti and send in a pinch hitter Milt Thompson. A trivia question the guy that uh, comes to mind 25 home runs for the Dodgers and the Mets Charlie Neal comes to mind. 
Well, it's too bad that Charlie Neal comes to mind because <laughs> that isn't one of them. Well, you you put that very nicely. I appreciate it. It's our first day. I mean, I'm not going to shoot you down. <laughs> well, I can't wait till week 18. One ball, one strike. <laughs> Milt Thompson hitting only 143. Sedano waits on deck. Two and one on Thompson. Milt Thompson, I'm sure wondering, hey, why don't I get a shot out in left field? They've given a shot to everyone else. And the most pinch hits among any active major league ball player. Easy comebacker to Harnish. The underhand flip for the second out. Right now back to Hollywood. Chip Carey is standing by with an update. Chip, what do you have? Joe, moments ago you saw Ken Griffey Jr. knock a double off the wall. Well, Paul Sorrento just drove him in. The double off the glove of Dwayne Hosey and left. He can't make the play. Junior strolls in. Sorrento the double. It's 6-3 Red Sox now in the seventh inning. Back to you in New York. All right, Chip. A 6-3 Boston late defense has been such a big problem for Boston this season. Like Hosey could have caught that ball, but just couldn't hang on. What was that? Ball one on a 57 footer. That was what it was. Sedano showing bunt. Now he will gently replace his heart back into his chest. Showing bunt, skips rope, 57 foot slider. And an amazed look on the face of Roger Sedano. It's not a real good play with two out and nobody on to butt. Trying but it he, again. But he's trying it again. Of course, the added advantage is that Sedano gets a lot of singles anyway, and he's a fast runner. So with that in mind, it, it's not quite as bad for Sedano to be bunting with two out and nobody on. Usually, baseball thinking traditionally is to try to hit an extra base hit. That's strike two on Roger Sedano set up now with a ball and two strikes. And Harnish has come right after the Dodgers here in the seventh inning after his teammates gave him the lead. Two out, nobody on, and the one two to Sedano. Inning over. And for Harnish, his fifth strikeout. Time to stretch here at Shea Stadium. Mets bats. They lead the Dodgers 4-3. A look at Hideo Nomo as we get into the bottom of the seventh inning. That's what he's doing this season. Last year, of course, the National League Rookie of the Year. In Japan, where Hideo Nomo is king, fans watch Nomo on their way to work as the game is being played live 16 hours earlier in Los Angeles. Nomo became Los Angeles' fourth consecutive Rookie of the Year and started for the National League in the All-Star Game, led the league in strikeouts with 236. Six and four this year, and now out of the bullpen. Former starter earlier this year is Chan Ho Park, a record of three and two. He has started six games. He's appeared in 15. Standard equipment. He throws fairly hard. A good slider, good curveball from Park. Carl Everett will lead it off as a pinch hitter. Everett bats for Harnish. Harnish ends up going seven innings, allows three runs on four hits. Everett hitting 170, takes another strike, and it's 0 2. First inning of work for Park, facing Carl Everett. And the rumor is Carl Everett is on his way out of New York if they can find a taker. They are actively trying to trade this. Outfielding. So they can bring up Alex Ochoa, who is leading the International League in hitting, batting 377, three home runs in his last three games. Not much of a swing for Everett, a strikeout in the first out here in the seventh inning. Here is the answer to our men in trivia question. The only two players to hit 25 or more home runs in a career for both the Mets and the Dodgers. Not Charlie Neal, huh? Eddie Murray, Daryl Strawberry. Although Strawberry hit only 38 with the Dodgers. Eddie Murray, however, is still plugging right along for Cleveland. And 
and whenever he calls it quits five years from then he'll be in the Hall of Fame. Lance Johnson one out nobody on took a ball. I think with that answer I could not see the forest for the trees. I will never forgive myself for not getting the answer to the Affleck question of the week. Two and oh the count on Johnson. Now three and oh. So Park working his way into trouble. I said Affleck. I mean the Menon question of the week. <laughs> There's a strike. Guess I got a slap in the face for that, right? By Menon. <laughs> Three and one, the count on Johnson. Now ball four, a one out walk. <laughs> Shano Park, first inning of relief work. As he takes over here in the seventh inning and issues a one out walk. Strikeout and a walk. Take a look at our 7 11 game summary and see who the stars have been so far today. Mondesi, a two run double in the first. Johnson, Vizcaino knocked in runs in the third for the Mets. Blowers went deep. A solo shot is third of the year, but Chris Jones. An RBI double in the sixth inning to give the Mets their first lead of the day. And here in the bottom of the seventh inning, they still lead 4 3 and have Johnson at first one out. Or Jose Vizcaino. And a great job by Pete Harnish. He appeared to get stronger as the game became longer, giving up two runs in the first inning and the solo home run in the fourth to Blowers. Can only win this game now. Can you buy Menon products at 7 <laughs> Eleven? I suppose you can, yes. Just a question. That's Doug Henry, <laughs> likely to be the next Mets pitcher. <laughs> Ms. Caino's had a big day, a couple of hits. One of the game stars, an RBI, a run scored. Into center field. Sedeno doesn't have to move much. Two out. So Park, after the one out walk, comes back to get Vizcaino, and now we'll deal with Bernard Gilkey. Mets have scored four runs on seven hits today, but surprisingly, Gilkey has not been a part of the New York offense. 0 for 3. Did line out to right center and was robbed of a hit on a good running grab by Roger Cedeno in that sixth inning. Here in the seventh, bats for the fourth time today. Lance Johnson has 12 stolen bases this season. to Gilkey. These Dodgers just keep coming up with pitching whether it's from the United States of America or their international scouting is unbelievable. Extraordinary it really is. Fred Clare largely responsible for that the general manager of the Dodgers. They pump a lot of revenue into international scouting. Dodgers kiddingly refer to themselves as IHOP with Tom Candiotti from the States. Estacio from the Dominican Republic, as is Ramon Martinez. Nomo from Japan, Ishmael Valdez, who will start tomorrow's game against Mark Clark from Mexico. And then Chan Ho Park, who's in the game now from South Korea. So he moved from South Korea to Los Angeles. Now he's been moved to the bullpen. And pitching here, keeping a close eye on Lance Johnson over at first. They all sit together. Good group of young pitching, and they just crank it out year after year after year. That's strike two. 
Lance Johnson meanwhile may not set any records but he has a lot of them. Matter of fact he owns a record company a recording company called Lance Productions. Has a new CD out. Now he is not a performer but he is the owner of it. It's based in Chicago called Lance Productions. Scott Radinsky for the Dodgers has a rock band with the two of them together. Beautiful music. One on two out and Park really worried about Lance Johnson over at first. That's collusion. It might be fraternization certainly. <laughs> One ball two strikes as Park tries to pitch a scoreless seven. Good fastball and Gilkey was frozen. That was heat from Chan Ho Park and we are through seven here at Shea. Mets take the field in the eighth. They lead the Dodgers by one. Mets on top four to three a new pitcher and Doug Henry but you talk about how to enhance the sounds of baseball. Bruce Freming certainly did that with that punch out of Bernard Gilkey. Making the last out in the seventh inning. Ah! Ninety three mile per hour fastball from Chan Ho Park and Gilkey was frozen. Hollinsworth leads it off. The right guy's coming up for the Dodgers to do something about this 4 3 deficit here in the eighth inning. Hollinsworth, Piazza, and Karos. <laughs> 2 0. Oh. Henry into the game. He is not allowed to run in his last five appearances. ERA at 4.33. He's lowered his ERA from 5.95. Former closer with Milwaukee delivers a strike and it's two and one. At 29 saves with Milwaukee back in 92. And the Met bullpen becoming a lot more solid of late. Last year the same problem. A tough first six weeks. Then they straightened out to become very formidable for the rest of the season. Henry trying to hold it for John Franco. Who will enter the game in the ninth inning if the Dodgers fail to score here? Three balls, one strike. The count on Hollinsworth with Piazza next. Full count. That a boy, Bruce. All right, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce Fremming, uh, one of the main reasons I have impaired hearing in my right ear, catching in front of Bruce for a few years. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Henry to Hollinsworth, a leadoff walk, and not a good start for Doug Henry. Catcher Mike Piazza. One on, nobody out. And Pavlik, he's on the walkie talkie. Forget the phone, he's on the walkie talkie. Greg Pavlik, the pitching coach for. New York is on the walkie talkie down to the bullpen. As Piazza stands in. Go ahead run at the plate. The Dodgers have the right guy in there. Lead off man drew a walk and now Piazza takes a ball. Piazza today. A walk a single. His single nearly left the ballpark back in the third inning. He has hit 14 home runs driven in 40 as Dave Malicki gets ready for the Mets in their bullpen. Strike one. Wicked slider right there and Piazza reacted like it was a wicked slider. Rarely see Piazza bailing out against a right hander but he did, did it then. We well, didn't need to. The <laughs> balls out right. over the plate into center into right center field he can get it out of any ballpark. In any part of the ballpark, too. One ball, one strike. That's out of play, right side. Good pitch, strike two. Here is that previous slider that we referred to. Watch the front side of Mike Piazza. Hitters refer to that as bailing. Wicked slider, and a true reaction. To what it was, and then he came back inside with a fastball. Piazza's in the hole now. One ball, two strikes. 
but not your typical power hitter. A guy hitting 374. Spoils a pitch, still one and two. Piazza has great opposite field power, like Dale Murphy or Orlando Cepeda. Should be a uh, against the catcher's fraternity to peak. But you can see Brent Maine looking up at Piazza to see if he is setting up too soon. Catchers don't like to do that. Last two pitches have been over the inner half, and Maine sets up there again. Caught a lot of the plate. Piazza into center. Base hit in front of Lance Johnson. Hollinsworth will stop at second, and it's two on with nobody out. That's the difference between Piazza and most power hitters. He had two strikes. He put the bat on the ball and gets a big base hit. Not only that, all power hitters or most power hitters get First hits like this. If a guy doesn't have power, the outfielder isn't as deep, and Lance Johnson catches it before it hits the ground instead of making a superb play after it hits the ground. Hollinsworth didn't get a great read on it, so he went station to station, ends up at second base. Piazza is the runner at first, but not for long. Chad Fonville will come off the bench and run for Piazza for two reasons. Tim, not only do you get the better speed with Fonville, that's obvious, and that's the go-ahead run, but you get Piazza out of the game who still is bothered by the bad right knee. Now, I think the former point that you made is the most important. You win the game more by putting, or the chances are you win the game by putting Fonville in as the trail runner at first base. Especially with a guy like Karras at the plate. He takes a strike. So the runner at second, drew a leadoff walk, Todd Hollinsworth. Then a base hit by Piazza. Chad Fonville comes in and he will do the running. And it's two on with nobody out for Karras, who is driven in 29, hitless today. Good pitch inside for ball one. Nobody's going to bunt in this situation with your cleanup hitter, especially a guy like Karras. But the risk for the Dodgers is the double play ground ball. He's grounded into nine this year. A long look by Henry. Good play by Ordonez for the force out. The double play. 6 4 3. And there aren't many who would start a double play on a ball hit there. What a play by Ordonez. Not only the catch, but the throw. What's the throw again? Oh. He has the ability to throw strikes with his body in any position. And he threw a strike to Vizcaino, who relayed it to first. A 6 4 3 double play, and now a runner at third, two out for Mondesi. Ball one. I guess if you're going to see a play like that between these two teams, you expect to get it out of Ordonez, who game in and game out dazzles you with something from that shortstop position. Twice today, the catch earlier in the game in the second inning in foul territory. And now that double play. Oh, did the Mets need that one? Now the tying run at third with two out. Thanks to the defensive help from Ordonez. Hollinsworth at third, two out. And a 1 1 count on Raul Mondesi, who has a two run double. He's one out of three. Down the left field line. Will it stay fair? No. Strike two. Now, Doug Henry flirted with Piazza inside with a fastball. Piazza single the right center field and now he does it again with Mondesi in game situations you don't want to get beat with anything other than your best pitch and the best pitch now for Doug Henry is not his fastball we've seen the quality slider to me I think that's the pitch to throw even if you miss three times and again you have a very aggressive hitter 
and Mondesi, who will swing at a ball out of the strike zone. Tying run at third, two out, and Mondesi set up with a ball and two strikes as Henry tries to pitch around a walk and a hit here in the eighth. Two and two, and Mondesi wouldn't chase. Dodgers thought they had something here in the eighth inning put their first two on but Karos grounded into a 6 4 3 double play. Here comes the slider right here 2 2 pitch almost backed up and caught the inside corner full count. Saw the three fingers that Brent Main put down calling for the slider the ball backs up. Stays inside. Ball three, three and two. Base hit would tie it. Off the end of the bat. Henry, a good play, inning over. A leadoff walk, a base hit by Piazza, but Ray Ordonez, the rookie shortstop, spoils the eighth for LA. The 6 4 3 double play in the Mets. Hanging on, leading 4 3. Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by MasterCard. MasterCard, it's smart money. By the new Dodge, we're thinking ahead. By 7 Eleven, oh, thank heaven for 7 Eleven. And by Zantac 75, the final word in acid relief. Well, Tim, not only did Ray Ordonez make a dazzling double play or start one, but Henry saved the lead for the Mets with his glove. All three outs in that inning were just terrific. Henry catching that ball behind him and the underhand throw to Pettigini to get Mondesi. If that ball trickles away with Mondesi's speed, it's a tie game. A runner at third at the time, two out that end of the inning, and Chan Ho Park now working to a new catcher as Tom Prince takes over behind home plate. Kent takes a strike. Jeff Kent hitless today. Tom Prince now doing the catching. Strike two. Tom Prince the backup to Mike Piazza. Much of a swing by Kent, totally jammed, and Castro makes the play. One out. There are very few baseball fans First that buy baseball, baseball tickets to see shortstops play. Ozzie Smith was one of those. Cal Ripken certainly one of those. And Ardonia's with plays like this is going to be one of those types of players. There was a quote attributed to Ozzie Smith after the Cardinals opened the season here in New York and we showed you the great play that Ordonez made down the line. Franco warms up in the bullpen. I was surprised to hear Ozzie Smith say it but he did. He said that guy is definitely the second coming of me. That is high praise from a future Hall of Fame inductee. It really is. Pettigini at the plate with a count of a 2 and 0. Oh. Roberto's had a big day. His second day as a New York Met. He's two out of three. The game tying single, and he scored the go ahead run back in the sixth. I have uh, said about Ordonez that uh, he's only 23 years old, and his hands and his feet are so quick. He's the type of player that has to grow into his hands and his feet. Almost like a gangly teenager, they have to grow into their feet, but uh, sometimes they. You know the feet are so quick the hands are so quick that they react faster than the mind can. They three balls on that double play three balls and a strike on Pettigini full count and I would imagine at times that's why sometimes Ordonez will make an error on a routine play right a double error his first two errors of the year a, a play like that with the bases loaded in Colorado he bobbled the ball then had no chance and threw it away. More heat from Chan Ho Park and the second out of the inning as Park has struck out three in an inning and two thirds. Pettigini goes down. And the batter will be Chris Jones. Next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, Fred McGriff 
And the world champion Atlanta Braves take on Dante Bichette and the Colorado Rockies. Coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central, or 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. That is next Saturday. Chris Jones looks at ball one high from Chan Ho Park. Base is empty for Jones, two out. And a 2 0 count. John Franco getting ready to pitch the ninth. He will deal with DeShields, Blowers, and Castro, the six, seven, and eight hitters for Los Angeles. Jones couldn't catch up, two and one. 26,445 at the ballpark here today. And they have been treated to a well played game. Good pitching, good defense on each side. Top of this eighth inning saw the best defense of the day. Two out, nobody on, and now a 3 1 count on Chris Jones, who let out a scream as that ball came up and in. Enhancing the audio once again. <laughs> Close. Yes, it was. And ball three, three and one. Pretty good swing, three and two. How about the Dodgers to have someone like Chan Ho Park to come out of the bullpen and pitch in middle relief? Talk about getting you to your closer or even your setup man, Osuna. There aren't many better than Chan Ho Park. Out of play, still three and two. Uh, he's actually a starting pitcher that's pitching in middle relief. As you mentioned earlier, starting the season and the rotation, six starts, and in the bullpen, the Dodgers very strong pitching, second in earned run average in the National League as Dave Wallace looks on. Three balls, two strikes. That's out of play. The Yankees have a right hander. Joe Torre refuses to put in the rotation because he is so good pitching three times a week. Mariano Rivera getting you to the late innings and to your closer. Mariano Rivera earlier in the year pitched 20 seconds, 26 consecutive innings without allowing a run. 15 straight innings without allowing a hit. Hart blows away Chris Jones, and that's four strikeouts in two innings for Chan Ho Park. He has done his job. Now with John Franco do his. Ninth inning, Mets lead the Dodgers by one. I love the sounds of hockey. The <laughs> slap, crack of a slap shot. He shoots his goal! Hockey, it's a beautiful thing. The Stanley Cup Finals begin Tuesday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox. Ninth inning rolls around here at Shea Stadium. The Mets take the field, leading the Dodgers by one at four to three. The end of the game, Tim and I will select today's genuine Chevrolet player of the game. That'll be coming up and is still up in the air. Although I'm sure we have a couple of candidates in mind. New third baseman is Edgardo Alfonso. Takes over for Jeff Kent to improve the defense. And on the mound, looking for the save, the left-hander, John Franco. John Franco, the only left-hander in the history of baseball with more than 300 saves. He has 10 this year, a two and two record. Both of those wins, by the way, were on blown saves. Here is the 300th save in the wonderful career of John Franco. It came on a surreal night, <laughs> maybe somewhere in London or Shea Stadium. John Franco became the first left-hander to pick up 300 saves. And now he takes over with 10 on the year. And number 11 would wrap up the 23rd win of the year for these young New York Mets. I don't know about you, Joe, but my player of the game so far, you don't know what's going to happen, obviously, but my player of the game is Ray Ardonias. Scoring runs at times is overshadowed by preventing runs, and that was done in the eighth inning. First time I ever heard that was from the ex-Cardinal manager, Whitey Herzog. As you look at that, down and out, one in 21. One and 
21 when trailing after eight innings. Mercy. John Franco facing Delano to Shields. One pitch. One out. The Shields ends the day 0 for 4. So to Shields the first out here in the ninth inning. That'll bring in Mike Blowers. There are some who say that left handed hitters fare better they against John Franco. They get a better look at this closer. Well you, and you take away the straight change but that hasn't been the case this year. Left handers hitting right around 215 against Franco this year. But that was that change up that he throws low and away to right handers the first pitch to Mike Blowers. Blowers has homered today. He did that in the fourth. He homered here last night. He has three home runs for the year. He's ahead on the count of one and oh. Missed the inside corner. Two balls, no strikes. Mike Bush has come into the on deck circle. Looks like he will hit for Juan Castro. To the left side for Alfonso, just into the game. Nothing to it, two out. You can come in for defensive help. When you get that first chance, it doesn't matter how good you are, you got to think twice. And Alfonso made that play easily. I think it's the toughest thing in baseball to come in for late inning defense. If you do it, you were supposed to have done it. If you don't do it, you're the GOAT. Here is Mike Bush pinch hitting in the last hope for the Dodgers here in the ninth inning. Dodgers came into today a record of 29 and 26, five and a half games behind San Diego. And the Padres play later tonight in Philadelphia. Strike one to Bush. Two out of seven with a home run and two RBIs as a pinch hitter. Ball one strike. Mike Bush is the only Dodger to hit a pinch hit home run this season. To Ordonez, fitting that he would end it. Dodgers go in order. Franco gets save number 11. And right on cue, Tim McCarver today's genuine Chevrolet player of the game, Ray Ordonez. He earned it too. Two brilliant plays, but the big play of the game was in the eighth inning with runners on at first and second and nobody out. A one hopper, and I mean a rope, off the bat of Eric Carros and watch Ordonez. Here are the final totals for this afternoon's game for the Mets. Four runs, seven hits, one error. That for won the game for runs. the Mets. That's there right. is no doubt. Yep. Winning pitcher. Pete our thanks Bucket. to John Filippelli, our producer, Bill Webb, our director, everyone who helped bring you the sights and sounds from New York. Tim McCarver, that was fun. Let's do it again next week. All right, you're on. So for Tim McCarver, I'm Joe Buck saying so long from Shea Stadium. The final score is the Mets four, the Dodgers three. Chip Carey, Steve Lyons, and Dave Winfield will be along with scores and highlights after these messages. Good night from New York. Welcome back to Hollywood. For those of you who just saw the Mets polish off the Dodgers by a score of 4-3. to three. Welcome back to the Hollywood Studios. I'm Chip Carey, joined by Dave Winfield and Steve Lyons. Guys, a busy day of baseball. Let's recap the highlights. First of all, in the National League, a beautiful day for baseball at Riverfront Stadium. Ray Knight trying to cool off with a little watermelon, but Greg Maddox was trying to cool off the Reds. The first pitch of the ball game. Curtis Goodwin, a chopper down to the line at third, and he hustles into second base with a leadoff double, a sign of things to come. Goodwin at third, Eric Owens, a bouncing ball off of Chipper Jones at third. They charge him with an error, gave the RBI to Owens. That put Cincinnati in front, one to nothing. Then Thomas Howard, a double laced down the left field line. 
That scores Barry Larkin. Morris to third, Howard to second. Reds lead it two to nothing still in the first inning, but the inning would not end for four-time Cy Young Award winner Greg Maddox. Eddie Thomas, he caps the inning with a single to left, scoring Morris. That put the Reds in front by a score of three to nothing. Greg Maddox suffering through a tough first inning. Then in the fourth, the Braves play long ball. Fred McGriff hits his fifth home run in five games against the Reds this year. A solo job into the right field seats. That cut the Reds' lead to 3-1 to one against Mark Portugal, seeking his first win of the year. The big play in the top of the sixth. Strike him out, throw him out, double play. Plus go the punch out. Dwight Smith thrown out. That kept the score 3-1. to one. Then in the seventh, Braves catcher Javi Lopez goes deep into the seats in left field. His eighth home run of the year. Eighth solo home run for the Braves in this series. Lee Smith wondering, will I get into the game? No, it's Jeff Brantley who punches out the side in the ninth, and the Reds beat the Braves. Final score, 3-2. The big story, Greg Maddox doubles his loss total over last year. Maddox now 5-4. The Reds snap a 12-game losing streak to the Atlanta Braves. At Shea Stadium in New York, Tommy Lasorda watching those Dodgers continue on the road in a beautiful New York afternoon. After Pete Harnish walked the first three batters of the inning, Raul Mondesi, a double past Jeff Kent in the first, scores two and puts the Dodgers in front two to nothing. In the top of the second inning, watch the great play. Ray Ordonez, the shortstop, a great backhanded catch against Roger Cedeno. Onto the bottom of the third, Jose Vizcaino singles up the middle, scoring Lance Johnson. That ties the game at two. Then in the fourth, Mike Flowers goes to the opposite field in right and puts the Dodgers in front three two in the fourth inning at Shea Stadium. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Roberto Pettigini in for Rico Bronia, who's injured. Singles to right, scoring Jose Vizcaino. That ties the game 3-3 in the bottom of the sixth inning. But the next batter with two outs, Chris Jones doubles, giving the New York Ball Club the 4-3 lead. And that's how the ball game ended. 4-3 New York comes from behind to win at Shea Stadium. Pete Harnish, the winner, 4-3. Tom Candiotti, the loser, in a long day. For Tommy Lasorda on a big day for Roberto Pettigini. So, guys, a lot of action hot and heavy in the National League of Play. And, Dave, I've got to ask you, what's going on with Greg Maddox? Maybe a big, big surprise in the National. Well, I'll tell you, Greg Maddox is having a little bad luck right now. The man's got a 2.87 ERA. There are only two people in the American League with earn run averages as such. But here he is, 5-4. and four. It shows he's human, but I'll tell you, when we get later on in the season, I guarantee you he'll run off six, seven in a row and be in the running for Cy Young again. He's finally showing that he's just a, an average human being, at least this year. And how about the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Mets? Hey, the Mets-Dodgers game, nice game to see. Right now, the Dodgers are going through a little bit of a bad period themselves. They've lost three out of the last five on this road trip. Good signs for the Dodgers. Mike Blower's getting his back going a little bit. He gets his third home run. Bad sign for the Dodgers. They're 1-22 in after trailing into the ninth inning. They cannot come back and win a game this year. Yeah, tough game to lose to that young New York ball club. 4-3 again, the final score. That's what's happened in the National League. We'll take a break and come back and look at the American. We return to Studio 7 in Hollywood right after this. To the ball game. Okay. Take me out with the crowd. <laughs> Buy me some peanuts and some cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes you out at the old ball game. Uh. Welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball. A wild game going at the King Dome in Seattle. Let's go straight to the highlights where Ken Griffey Jr. red hot 461 in his last 15 games. He pulls the Tim Wakefield knuckleball into the right center field gap. That scores Joey Cora and puts the Mariners up 1-0 in the top of the first. But in the bottom of the second, the Red Sox come streaking right back. Tim Nehring turns on the Bob Malacky pitch. He homers to left, his sixth tater of the year. That ties the game at one, a line drive shot at the Kingdom. But again, in the bottom of the third inning, Junior comes through again. This time hitting to the right side, scoring Joey Cora again, an infield ground out. Makes it 2-1 to one, Seattle. But in the top of the fifth inning, the turning point. Dwayne Hosey of the Red Sox hits a ball up the middle. Joey Cora with the error, his fifth of the year. That allows Bill Selby to come in, tie the score at 2-2. Lou Pinella, a decision to make. Does he lift Malaki to pitch 
Lee Guterman against Mo Vaughn. He stays with the right-hander, and Mo Vaughn makes him pay, and Malaki knows it. Upper deck shot, 21st home run of the year for Mo Vaughn. That puts the Sox in front, 5-2. to two. But the Mariners, again, the top offensive team in baseball, do not quit. In the eighth inning, Bone, Jay Buhner, line drive off the wall in left. No, it's over the wall. A home run off Mike Stanton, his 19th of the year. Uh, that cuts the Red Sox lead to 6-4. to four. Then, two batters later, Russ Davis trying to fill in for Mike Flowers, who's now with the Dodgers. He goes deep to right center, his fifth of the year. That cuts the Red Sox lead to 6-5 to five in the ninth. And the bullpen for Boston starting to make Kevin Kennedy nervous again as they play on in the top of the ninth. It's Boston 6, the Mariners 5 at the Kingdom. Earlier today... At County Stadium in Milwaukee, tempers flared again as they did yesterday. It was Vina and Albert Bell last night. Today, it's Kenny Lofton and Fernando Vina. Vina thought he had his nose broken. That wasn't the case, but he and Lofton go nose to nose. No punches thrown and calm restored. Later, the Brewers get revenge on Lofton and pick him off. That in the third inning of a scoreless ball game. Great defense all day long. Carlos Baerga, great gold glove work at second base. He throws Vina out at first, but then the Brewers say, hey, Paybacks or you know what. Manny Ramirez thrown out by Jeff Cirillo. Great diving stab over at third. Game still tied until the top of the sixth inning. The one mistake Angel Miranda made, a bases loaded walk to Kenny Lofton. That made it Tribe 1, Brewers nothing. Phil Garner makes the decision to pull his man from the ball game, and it paid off. As in the seventh inning with two out, Jose Valentin hits one deep into the gap in right, an RBI triple scoring Greg Vaughn to tie the ball game in the raindrops in Milwaukee. Still in the bottom of the seventh inning off Jack McDowell. David Hull smacks a curveball into right, scoring Valentin, and the Brew crew charging ahead. Two to one is the score. On to the top of the ninth. Mike Fetters in to close it out. Manny Ramirez singles to left. Vaughn slips on the wet field. Ramirez trying to hustle and turn it into a double. But look at the throw from Vaughn. He's out by a mile, and that saves the day for the Brewers. Two to one, the final score in a wild ball game at County Stadium. Jack McDowell with the loss, his fourth of the year. Other scores in the American League. The Yankees now lead Oakland 4-3 in the eighth. Jeff Nelson, Carlos Reyes on Paul O'Neill had a two RBI double in the fifth inning. Kansas City and Toronto elsewhere. That game now tied bottom of the 10th. Jeff Montgomery gives up a solo home run to John Oru to tie the game in the ninth. Well, guys, what a wild day of baseball today and uh, the continuing controversy about Albert Bell and his run-in with Fernando Vina of the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, despite the bad blood that's been brewing between these ball clubs because of that forearm shiver to, to Vina from Albert Bell, only result today was a little woofing around second base. No blows were thrown. What took center stage was the pitching. Angel Miranda pitched a wonderful game. He uh, stranded 13 base runners. He left it up to Mike Fetters. And would you believe, Albert Bell was up to, up to bat in the ninth inning, took a strikeout, and uh, so that was the end of that. Hey, you got to love the way Fernando Vina sticks his swollen nose right into things, don't you? Hey, hey it's, it was, I was glad that nothing really came of that today. It could have been an ugly situation. But I'll tell you what, some of the teammates there in Cleveland have to start wondering about the way Albert Bell keeps acting on the field. Interesting ball game today as the Brewers beat the Tribe 2-1 to the final score. Steve, Dave, and I will have more from Studio 7 in Hollywood as we continue with Fox Saturday Baseball right after this. Sunday, June 23rd, a one-of-a-kind international sporting event. Join John Madden, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, James Brown, Matt Millen, and Kevin Harlan for World Bowl 96 NFL-style action. American players from Europe, the championship of the World League on Fox. You can see why the fans in the New York area are raving about Ray Ordonez. Look at him help turn the double play in the top of the eighth inning off Eric Carroll's that helped preserve a 4-3 New York win today. What a super play by Ray Ordonez. Let's rejoin Tim McCarver and Joe Buck with Bernard Gilkey in New York. Okay. Thanks, Chip. Well, a chance to visit with Bernard Gilkey after the Mets 4-3 win over the Dodgers and Bernard Gilkey. A day in which you didn't pick up a hit, but you had a good view of Mr. Ray Ordonia as a shortstop. What's it like thinking that ball's going to shoot out into left field and all of a sudden it, it stops and heads to second base? Oh, well, Ray really makes it easy to play left field. I mean, uh, anything that I can't get to, he definitely gets to. <laughs> and uh, just watching him and playing behind him every day has been a real thrill so far. 
Bernard, uh, Tim McCarver here, uh, super ball game for your club today. And you were traded from the Cardinals uh, last winter. I guess initially it was a shock, but you have worked yourself into being the best ball player on this club. And over the first two months, their most valuable player. Well, it's been really fun here. It's been a challenge. You know, we have uh, a lot of young guys on the team. And so I, I want to come over and uh, give some leadership to these guys and just, uh, you know, just play ball and have fun. And, and we have a good group of guys here, and it's, it's been a real thrill so far. It's a good situation for you here, isn't it? It really is. Uh, you know, coming over and being one of the veteran guys, that, that, that kind of surprises me, you know, because I feel like I'm still young in the game. But, you know, being one of the uh, elder statesmen out here, it's kind of fun, you know, helping the young guys out and just playing and having, having a good time in New York. Bernard Gilkey, congratulations on the win today, and we'll see you down the road. Thanks a lot, Joe Buck. That is New York Mets left fielder Bernard Gilkey. After the Mets beat the Dodgers 4-3, right now we'll send it back out to Hollywood and Chip Carey. Hi, Chip. Hello there, Joe Buck. Nice job today. Great job today by the Mets as well. And, Steve, what about Ray Ordonez at shortstop? This kid's going to be a sensation. This guy is tremendous already. We talk about the greatest shortstops in the game, and I think right now you talk about Omar Vesquel right now as being the best. Give Ordonez a couple more years, and he's going to be talked about in those same sentences. Coming into the game, hitting 312. He only hit two bucks last year in AAA, so that's a big surprise. He's carrying a big bat. All right, guys, uh, big, big doings in Toronto today against the Kansas City Royals. We have a final score to report for you. How about Toronto? A solo home run from John Olru to tie the game. A two-run home run by Joe Carter in the 10th wins it off Jeff Montgomery. 5-3 the final score. Toronto comes from behind to beat Kansas City. That's impressive. How about the Mariners? They're still fighting. One out now, bottom of the ninth inning. Red Sox 6, Mariners 5. Late home runs by Buner and Davis have brought the Mariners 2 within 1. The Yankees playing against the Oakland Athletics. New York now leads at 4-3 in the bottom of the eighth inning. Jeff Nelson, Carlos Reyes, Paul O'Neill. The big day today. Two RBI double in the fifth inning of play in that ball game. Well, guys, first day in the books here at uh, Studio 7. What are your impressions? It's been a great day of baseball. It's been great. Great to be in the studio. Look forward to next week. Hey, we were hoping Saturdays would be special right here on Fox. I think the players knew that. They picked it up today. Well, a great day. Hopefully we can have the same kind of success next Saturday. Hope you enjoyed Fox Saturday Baseball. For Dave, for Steve, Chip Carey, we'll see you next week. Tonight, see what happens when the world's biggest party goes completely out of control. Hit the streets of New Orleans with cops at Mardi Gras. Part of a full hour starting at 8, 7 central. Followed by America's Most Wanted right here on Fox. Tuesday, it's game one of the Stanley Cup Finals when either the Florida Panthers or the Pittsburgh Penguins travel to Denver to take on Joe Sackick and the surprising Colorado Avalanche. Don't miss all the action live in primetime beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific right here on Fox. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports, home of the Stanley Cup, World Series, and Super Bowl 31.